Hello. Hello, Daniel. You're up. Kakiro, Kakiro. How are you? Good. Good, good. How Everything are you? Everything good? I'm yeah, good, good, thank you. I'm good. Mm -hmm. um, today we're going to finally get to uh, to the painting layer of yes. this image. Yes. We have done the underdrawing. Yeah. We have done the underpainting. And today we're going to ruin all of those nice <laughs> things by doing the painting layer. I'm sure you're not going to ruin oh, them. Oh, I'm positive. No. Um, no, I'm always a little... Mm. Hesitant? Um, well, yeah, I guess insecure is more. Because hes hesitant would be... I would feel hesitant means that I find that there is like a reason for not wanting to, you know, kind of push forward. Um, but the irrational reason here is that I'm insecure about it. And, um, but what gives me some sort of peace is the fact that, um, I feel this every single time, mm -hmm. e every single time I feel, I have this fear of ruining whatever was underneath, you know, whatever good decisions I made, I feel I'm surely going to ruin them just because I wanted to push forward. Mm -hmm. So it's not that I have to stop feeling that, you know, thing is that I have to know that I'm just always going to feel that. And it's good. It keeps you on your toes. You know, I, I guess that ultimately speaks about a sense of responsibility with the painting. Mm -hmm. um, a bit of awareness of, of like heightened awareness of the decisions that you've previously made. So, you know, you've already worked hard at putting stuff down and resolving certain things. You don't want to just, you know, paint over them like, like, you know, like nothing is, um, is precious. No, you want to respect prior decisions and, uh, build upon them. Mm -hmm. So we're going to, we're going to begin to do that today. I don't know if we're going to, well, we could actually do this today and tomorrow. Like we're cropping the painting because pretty yep. much the left side of the painting is going to remain the same. Mm -hmm. And the right side of the of the painting, the right hemisphere, we're going to paint. Mm -hmm. uh, so, yes, it's going to be a bit of a, you know, not a harsh cut between one area and the next. I'm going to try to integrate them in some way that seems a little, you know, a bit organic, not 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 so much forced, but hopefully it kind of flows. Um, um, but. So we cropped it here because I'm going to try to concentrate today on this, but I'm not, I'm pretty sure I'm not going to be able to do this whole thing. I'm pretty sure I'm going to be, if I'm lucky, I'm going to be able to do this mm -hmm. right here. Um, but if I paint enough of the tiger, I just know how I'm going to paint the rest of the tiger. So hopefully whatever I do here, it also gives me clues as to what I'm going to do. Um, you know, what I'm going to have to repeat mm -hmm. then, um, uh, further down. And then the tiger that's on the right, I'm going to paint um, adjusting my values. So there's not going to be the saturation that we have here, nor the contrast, nor the level of contrast that we have here. Mm -hmm. So maybe I even like do something that I don't usually do, which is pre-mix certain um, colors mm. just to give me a base. Of, like super controlled. Yeah, yeah, very controlled because I, I want this little guy to be you know, further back in the back. Yeah. And this guy is, is me kind of out, you know, I have the paintbrush, <laughs> like um, and I'm just, uh, looking, you know, in awe at, um, at what, um, Tiger Jungi is, uh, is doing. So, um, so yeah, so let's, uh, let's get to that. We're not going to use medium today. We're just going to use paint. So mm -hmm. technically what we're going to do is um scumble mm. so we are going to put like a very thin layer of paint on top of this drawing yeah you'll you're gonna see in sections well you've seen me do this danny so yeah. but, but for everyone but else, you everyone yeah yeah so you know i'm gonna concentrate on sections but what i tend to do and what helps me a lot is to you know if i start with a very small brush and i try to do like bits by bits bit by bit you know, in this painting, I always feel that my painting suffers for it because I start to be a little too tight. I start mm -hmm. to become a little too tight while yeah. painting. And I start to feel like I'm painting by numbers. 
Mm-hmm. And I don't like that feeling at all. A yeah. lot of people could grab like a small, you know, round synthetic brush right now mm-hmm. and start with the nose and then kind of spread out. And then, you know, that they just resolve everything as they go along um, little by little, you know, bit by bit, small area by small area. Mm-hmm. A lot of people can do that. I am not so confident in, in, in that way of painting. Mm-hmm. So when I have to always feel is that my painting is fresh it kind of it can kind of be resolved in a very fresh manner Mm -hmm. Uh, even though it's going to be tight and of course i have to paint with like small herb brushes um some of these areas um maybe that's why i want to give myself like um a context where i can feel that i can still not so much attack the painting as if this was like an ala prima painting and this was all just blank and I'm trying to like, you know, put some strokes down. But, um, you know, have let the painting have still some personality to it. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I think that's where, I think that's my sensibility and I think that's where my painting can um, shine. Yeah. So we're going to, by by scumbling like a, let's say like a close to a local color and then going in and and shaping those masses of color a little bit more, I kind of, kind of assure myself that I'm just going to be hopefully painting more confidently because I'm going to be on my toes. I'm going to try to be on my toes while I paint. Mm -hmm. So, and uh, we're not going to do anything weird with, uh, in terms of palette for this Mm -hmm. painting. We're actually going to do a Zorn palette. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because... That we don't really need a ton of hues in this painting. Mm-hmm. Actually, you know, this is going to be like a regular tiger. So it's going to be your uh, lighter parts that are kind of you know, this cool whitish, grayish areas. The darker parts, which are going to be, you know, towards the um, ivory black that we're going to have in the palette. Mm-hmm. And then we're going to have just a very varied, um, you know, range of yellow reds they can be grayer they can be a little bit darker they can you know go a little towards the yellow side and we're going to favor the ochre they could go a little towards the redder side we're going to favor the um the cad red in those mixes but i think we can uh do a lot with uh with a zorn palette here Mm -hmm. and because we're painting from you know a drawing just um and mashing our um our references together this gives us like having a like a tight palette, like a very small palette, gives yeah. us a sense of uh, unity when there's a lot of like little um, things that we have to piece together. So and the palette for the tiger in the back, oh, the same for the pre mix is yeah. the same. Same, okay. but we're gonna we're gonna uh, favor in that mix. We're talking about favoring ochre, favoring red. Yeah. In in here. Uh, sometimes they're going to be, you know, darker, grayer. Yeah, yeah, for sure. But for this one, we're going to favor actually our our white. So yeah, our yeah, white yeah. is going to be dominant in those mixes, trying to, you know, really push, push it back. Yeah, a lot of this uh, tiger back. There's there's a couple of paintings of Tiepolo, mm-hmm. and I I I say Tiepolo because there's like two enormous paintings. When when you go up the steps, those never changed um, spots because they actually feel like. It it actually feels like those paintings have to be at the Met in that in that um, spot, but there's these two enormous paintings of Tiepolo, and one of them actually I, I'm trying to remember if this is the case in both of them. I think in both of them you can see this, but you know there's a scene like in 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 the uh, foreground, and as you're traveling to the background, the figures, for example, there's some soldiers in the background. The figures uh, start getting muted. And, and in, in a very uh, restricted value scale, which mm-hmm. is absolute, it's very simple, very, very beautiful. A lot of painters used that device to like separate uh, foreground from background. Yeah. Um, and it's just such an effective device. We don't have like a full background. It's not as if we have like a horizon line and we have like uh, something in the foreground that's in shadow, then light, and then shadow, then light. And we have to traverse all of this uh, terrain to go, you know, way back into the horizon, but um, but as a as an uh, as an ally in terms of speaking about um, depth, uh, controlling your value and saturation is like perfection. Um, you know, people that did um, um, American painters, American landscape painters, um, like like Thomas Church, 
um, they were geniuses at at controlling, you know, like mountains in the back, um, and and you know, pretty pretty amazing how they um, were influenced by noticing how um, atmospheric perspective, which that that's what it's called, you know, how things as they go back. Uh, they get less saturated and less affected by the contrast that is very apparent when you have things in front of you. Mm -hmm. And they used it, you know, painters throughout history used it so wisely. Like, it, it's one of the things that I absolutely adore about the history of painting, one of those elements like in picture making and in telling a story mm -hmm. that I'm really surprised at myself that I actually like it so much and my painting you know, at times can be so much about controlling value that I have rarely, if ever, used it. So oh, it's really? really sad. Yeah, I don't, I can only think of, you know, very few paintings where I've made like, um, like an effort to try to do that. Because, you know, it's, very, I, it's a shame. Yeah, it's a yeah, because yeah, it's beautiful. Because it feels when, when you use that, when people use that, it feels very gloomy. And yeah. I think that some of your paintings, now that I'm thinking about it, feel gloomy because they have like a dense atmosphere right but not as a de device to right to put things in the back and yeah. like to push things to the front right exactly so exactly. Yeah. usually my paintings are very squished mm -hmm. you know it's like very um flattened mm -hmm. you know they're kind of like i, I was i spoke about this I, i've spoken about this I'm, i'm very conscious of this but they're very much um in in like an x y axis so they work like this and like this but they don't quite necessarily usually you know speak about depth mm -hmm. and it's more like if in this x y plane things were like affected by a very dense atmosphere mm -hmm. and i'm super happy with working with those very few kind of easy variables mm -hmm. um i struggle with it too because i i oftentimes think it's like Am I really pushing this thing that I love or am I not pushing by, you know, avoiding this like Z axis that, that speaks about depth? Mm -hmm. You know, so, oh, go, go, go. No, 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 go ahead. Go no, ahead. no, no, no go, go. No, I was done. I was done. No, because you said so. So what do you think, Danny? <laughs> no, I was going to say that the only, because I'm trying to think about your paintings and I think that the only one that kind of maybe has that, but I mean, you know more. Of mm -hmm. course, because it's your painting, but uh, the one of your dad with the legs. I think bit. it's a bit gloomier, so that pushes the legs to the front. Yeah, but it's yeah, but it's not something you usually do because, as no. you were saying, it's like everything's there. Yeah, yeah, and again, I that that's something that I I personally struggle with quite a bit because I I always question myself and I always say like. Am I doing like am I doing this justice or am I doing it because I am afraid of making more quote unquote like complex pictures? But I do think that I mean, you do it because you decide and it makes sense with what you decide to pursue in your paintings. Yeah. It's not like you're avoiding it because you're scared of using it. Right. It's just that with like the tools you use for what you want to communicate, you just don't need to. Like you just... That's what I always hope. I hope that, you know, when the when you look at an image, the image justifies itself. Like, you know, it, it doesn't leave you like wanting for more, yearning yeah. for more, you know, and, and hopefully the few variables that you deal with, if you decide to deal with few variables, are, are dealt with in, in like a way that, does them justice yeah because i also think that the fact that we have tons of tools at our disposal does not mean that we have to use every single tool yeah, exactly not for our work because it exactly it would feel weird super weird because then they don't feel intentional they just feel like it's like i had to add this yeah, and i just like, like blend it all together and create yeah. like this kind of weird monster with all of it Yeah, the the fact that you're you're very right. The fact that we have learned so much from prior, you know, amazing painters throughout history, each one of them doing, you know, very different, very particular things. Mm. And the fact that we have we live now like centuries apart from from geniuses in painting 
Um, and that all of this is like available to us and it's like just right there for us to use, you know, their knowledge, their experience is right there for us to use if we choose to. Yeah. It doesn't mean that we're obligated to do it. It doesn't mean that because somebody has done it before us that we have to do it. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, you can. That's why I was saying you can make your painting about 20 variables and, and you know, you juggling, a, you know, tons of like very complex variables, um, you know, constantly within your painting. And that's totally fine. That's obviously something that you can do. Or you can make it about one or two things and just try to make the painting, like try to make those, a painting where those two things can shine beautifully. Hmm. And I don't think there is one painting that trumps the other. Like it's not, I don't think it's about, hey, I did more things and, you know, hence I, I deserve like bigger praise or I deserve like a bigger reward afterwards. I don't think so. I think, you know, complex paintings surely deserve to be, you know, um, recognized mm -hmm. for sure. But I don't think that they are inherently more than, you know, more of a painting than a simpler painting. Yeah. And I also think that there's so many tools that you could even, like, contradict if you use tons of them in the same painting. Because yeah. maybe you want to do, like, a... Um, like thinking of the light, you want to do a like more Caravaggio style of painting, but then you think about what you were saying about the gloomy part of Tiepolo, and it's like trying to play with those two, it could make a terrible mix if you don't know how to use them because then you would like kind of be in a conflict trying to like make the light a protagonist but also bringing the gloominess but then it wouldn't make sense to make the gloominess because it would be like a super hard uh black background so it would be very complicated to juggle those if it's right. not intentional right like you could make a trap to yourself those are good examples because i think for example caravaggio usually doesn't do you know he works on like x y yeah. axis Um, uh, think of calling of St. Matthew calling yeah, of St. Sure. Matthew it's like just the x-axis mm -hmm. like that painting is left to right right to left that's yeah. it that's it and it's just rhythms of light and shadow that's all that painting is I mean done masterfully of course um, conversion of St. Paul that's a Y painting mm -hmm. right that yeah. is just goes up and down yeah. that is You know, that's all that painting is trying to do. Again, up and down in the most masterful of ways in a um, in a setting that is super theatrical, um, enhances just light, the shapes of light, shapes of shadow. But um, but that's how it works. So, yeah, speaking about atmospheric perspective in a Caravaggio is very strange, mm -hmm. would be very, very strange. And that, that would be like a, a really good example of what we were saying that you can't speak of less variables, mm -hmm. and, but you, you can, you know, do them justice. You can say, I'm going to hopefully exhibit you in the best of ways so much that, you know, the viewer is not going to notice that there is like um, a simpler painting in its conception in mm. here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and also it's a way of saying you... Like, make your choices make sense. Like, if you want to show... Like, to if you want to have a narrative with light, you can do it and you wouldn't need, like, the atmospheric perspective because then you would be, like, adding some, something just to add it that right. may be uh, taking away the, like, the value or the, like, the weight of the thing you're trying to use. Because you're ju just, again, like try trying to like juggle a ton of things together. So there, there's a painting I've always spoken. I, I speak about this painting quite a bit, but or this painter quite a bit because he, he is one of like my favorite painters. But uh, Eugene Carrière, mm -hmm. like um French painter from late 19th century. Yep. 
he does very very atmospheric paintings like that's what he's known for and he he even does like almost grisaille like paintings but with like umbers with mm -hmm. like earth tones um just absolutely beautiful paintings mm -hmm. i i adore him as a painter and um and there's one painting that i have on this little book it's one it's probably like one of my favorite books that i have that i own it's a little book on eugene carrier and it has like a reproduction i think it's a double space a double page spread actually um the one of the baby no 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 it's a it's it's not reproduced well in the internet which is a very sad thing because i think it's a tremendous image but it's of a movie theater and mm -hmm. um or not a movie theater a, a, look for yeah it. a theater that was that was dumb well um, but it's of a theater yeah and um and you could see like the the sort of curving theater um and the uh that just the pe people sitting there but the thing is you can't really see the people that are there you you can only sense like just these very weird little shapes of light and it is look is these... it terribly yeah that's a terrible photo <laughs> okay no that's i've looked for that painting forever in the internet and it's just not there okay okay um there's another one that's a little bit better, but not at all. It's the the best reproduction, sadly, of that painting is in the book, um, but I I, ha I haven't seen it uh, in the internet. Um, so, you know, whenever I think of that painting, I realize, you know, you you can't paint, you can't want to paint like Bouguereau, and want to paint like Eugene Carrier. Hmm. Like there is a moment where it's almost like. You know, you're at a crossroads. Yeah, they, they like clash yeah, with each and other. You just cannot find compromise between them. Even if you want to, like, this is not a matter of like trying to keep everyone happy. Mm -hmm. It's not. This is a matter of saying what is closest to your sensibility. Like, yes. you know, it's, it's almost like you kind of have to choose a team because yes. you can't do everything. You mm -hmm. can't. I mean, there are incredibly talented people that, that you know, can do one painting trying to do something and then another painting trying to do something and then another painting, you know, where they go for something else. And there are, you know, there there's people with range nowadays that is like crazy. Hmm. There's people nowadays that study so much that their range is just absolutely crazy. But I think as a choice, when you when you decide that this is a choice, and you're going to make this for your life and and you want like your natural sensibility to um to meet you know this this search for ability that you are in you know with your painting you're going to realize that um that at some point things start to like branch out mm -hmm. and you're going to have to pick a pick a road you have to yeah you just have to so um you know, that painting, that Eugene Carrier painting of the theater, it just doesn't, or the opera, I, f I forget what it's called. I think it's, it, the, the name of it is something theater or something. Let me check. I don't know. But that painting can't be if you choose also to put a ton of detail, if you choose to paint it like a Bougar, uh, like a Bougaro. The Theater of Belleville. Okay. Theater of Belleville. Belleville. There we go. Or Belleville. And yeah. That's it. <laughs> The yeah. triplets of Belleville. Yeah. I always said Belleville. So, but I mean, I always say everything. Oh, it's perfect. However you say it. With a twist, it. so. However you say it, it's perfect. Um, so, yeah. So, my point is, you could never paint that painting if you wanted to force, like, a, a Bouguereau in there. Yeah. If you wanted to say, okay, I want this painting, but with this. Yes. It, it would be like, okay, no, that's not what you I, I mean i don't know what you have in mind but well, it's not completely yeah opposite you, yeah right you're not going to have like a happy medium mm -hmm. or you're not going to be able to say i want the atmosphere of this one but with the detail of this other painter it's yeah. like what no that's like impossible yeah but the reason those two paintings work those two painters work and those examples work is because it's almost like you're putting all your eggs into that basket yes. you're saying like i'm going to sacrifice this for this exactly and i think that's important the sacrifice in it yeah always i think in in almost every great painting there is there is some sense of inherent sacrifice yeah and and that also talks about 
decisions. Right. That I think that that's very important in painting and in art. That you can see someone taking a decision. It's not like, so I wanted to do this, but I had no idea. So I just like grabbed all the tools I learned and I did this. Because as you were saying, I mean, maybe you can end up in the middle, but it's like a very bland middle. Because if you want the atmosphere, but you also want the detail, maybe you end up doing something that's not going to be super powerful because it's not like super atmospheric as atmospheric and like super intriguing mm -hmm. or super detailed and super cool to stare at it, but something super bland that's in the middle because it's not atmospheric or detailed. It's just a blend of it, like just something. So How we say it's neither chicha nor limonada. Limonada, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Cool, cool opening conversation. Oh, I thought we were about to end. Yeah, so I'm, I'm, thank I'm, you, I'm everyone. Tired. And, Long no, you know, I'm today. not tired. Because I don't see Javier Ugarte here. But talking about what I'm drinking. <laughs> okay. I'm having cold brew. So, like, very strong coffee. I don't usually have coffee, but I bought it in the so store. Mm -hmm. And a creamer, like a, an almond creamer. But the, like, I'm not used to coffee, and cold brew is, like, the father of the strong caffeine. So, I am super up. Okay. I'm here. Well, yeah, you decided to share this hours. information. So yeah. I guess it's important. <laughs> no, I was just saying it because you were like, no, yeah, I'm tired. I'm done. And I was saying, well, actually, I'm not tired I'll at all. I'll take over. Yeah. You can take... Speak, 48 hours. Yeah. It's, speak for the whole... Um, You can talk for the whole video today. No. And also, the bad thing is that I start like trembling a bit. So you could, maybe you could tremble away while you speak for the whole. <laughs> I'll paint and you can talk. Well, yeah, it's good that I'm not trembling and painting, because um, that would be a terrible mix. Well, or a depends, cool one. Depends on what you're painting. Yeah, if I put all my eggs in it, and I just let it be a decision for my painting. Okay. Then it would be cool. So, um, would you like to say hi? I mean, we have to. <laughs> So, let's see. Alejandra Ardila dice Alejandra. un saludo para los dos. Hola, Alejandra, un saludo. Y Alejandra fue la primera saludando. Entonces, grande, gracias, Alejandra. Alejandra, por tener las notificaciones puestas. Grande, enorme. Miriam Díaz. Aunque no me vea, Alejandra. Your lolis. Dice hello. Hola, mi lolongis. Un besito, mami. Estaba hoy donde Santi. Mm. Y ahorita van para el cumpleaños de mi tía Luisa. Mm, feliz cumpleaños. Feliz cumpleaños, tía Luisa. Que la pasen muy bien. Sí. Eh, Camila, no, Camille O'Gorman. Oh, la, la, pues la, ten... la. Hola. Ogo, hola. Hola, Camila. Ogo. Camila, esa pintura está, que estás Camille? haciendo. Monstruo. Sí. Uf. Todas las Uf. que has subido. Además, es muy enorme chévere. esa sí, pintura. Sí, sí. Pues no sé, no sé qué tan grande sea. Pero parece enorme, Camila. No, pero yo siempre me sorprendo cuando veo la imagen de la pintura y luego veo cuando a veces Camila sube como... A Camila, que el proceso 23. El proceso como en el taller, o uno la ve detrás en el taller y es como, es gigante. Sí, muy sí, linda, muy, muy linda la pintura. Y gracias por acompañarnos, Camila. Muchas siempre, gracias por siempre. estar acá. Leslie Salas was saying, hello, I'm excited for this piece and a smiling face. Hey, Leslie, thank you for joining us. Germán Rodríguez, mm -hmm. alias Gabriel García mm -hmm. Márquez, dice hola. Hola, Germán, ¿qué tal? Yo, Germán. Luca Hola, Guadaño so. was saying, hey there, wow, this is looking amazing. Luca. Look at this. Oh, we know. <laughs> hey, Luca. Julián Cabrera dice, hola. Hola, Julián, ¿qué tal? ¿Qué dice Julián? ¿Cómo está Julián? ¿Qué tal está el clima por allá, Julián? Por acá, granizo, un no, poquito. Cinco minutos. Pero duro. Pero o ya sea, no hay. contra la ventana que queda al lado de mi escritorio, 
Sí, se oye, se oyó más. O sea, tenía el, el coso ese con cancelación de ruido. Uh -huh. Y se oía. Se, se oyó más, más duro de lo que no, fue. No, pues es yo que creo. fue cortico. Sí. Fue cortico, pero sí. O sea, ahorita pero... ni, había, ni quedó nada. No, no quedó ni granizo afuera. Pero día gris, un poquito. Bueno, está abriendo. Yo no sé, Bogotá es muy rara. Sofía Centurión. A Dice, Sophie. buenas tardes chicos, ¿cómo andan? Dani, estás preciosa con esa bandana. Ay, Sofi, tan linda, muchas gracias. Sofi, ¿qué fue muchas lo que gracias, se ganó? ¿Qué reconocimiento Sophie. fue que se ganó? La vi ahí como chicaneando. Ay, yo quiero saber. A ver, sí, Sofi. Con una pintura muy chévere, un retrato que hizo. Spill the tea, Sofi. ¿Qué yo, que, yo que te digo, fue un retrato tipo... Era un concurso tipo... No, pero ahí se te fue yo. raro. No, pues es que la Sofía es que ya habla como si tuviera mermelada en la boca. ¿Qué y significa la... eso? No sé, no sé. Si la oyeras es, es literal. <risa> Ricard was saying, hey guys, always nice listening slash watching to OPL while drawing. Hey Ricard, what awesome. are you drawing? And thank you for joining us. Carla Anglada. Who's saying hello, Danny mm -hmm. Nicolás in chat. Hey, Carla, how are you? Carlita. Leslie Salas was saying... Carla had... Carla had... You scared me, what? Uh, sorry. Um, a painting of her mother. Super mm -hmm. powerful painting. Very, oh, very I want nice. to see it. Yeah, very, very nice. In Instagram? On yes. Instagram? Yeah. Oh, I have to check it out. Yeah, very strong. Very, very powerful. Leslie Salas. Who's saying, apologies if you get this a lot. What pencil did you use for this sketch? Red outlines? Um, no, don't worry. Uh, just a regular color pencil. Regular waxy color pencil. I think the ones that I use are, uh, what are they? Um, Fabric, Fabric Stell. Castle. Yeah, yeah, but, you know, that, that's about it. The only reason I use those is because, I don't know. You have them. Yeah, because they're, they're here. But yeah. There's no real reason to use them. Like any, I have done other um, other pencil underdrawings with like my daughter's colors that they give her in school. So, you know, it doesn't matter. Brand doesn't matter. Mm. Gabriel Pozo dice, hola, ¿cómo están? Saludos. Hola, Gabriel, ¿qué tal? Nosotros muy bien. ¿Cómo está Gabriel? Gabriel decía a Daniel Ira. Uh -huh. Que Gabriel es eh, gemelo, ¿no es cierto? Ah, sí, me dijiste, me dijiste esta Gabriel mañana. Gabriel es gemelo. Sí, sí, sí. Que no sabíamos. Es que por las mañanas discutimos la vida de todas las de, personas. Todos que, los de Our Painted Life, sí. sí hacemos, es como, oye, ¿y tú sabías que Gabriel es lista? gemelo? Y yo, no. Y hablamos. No, cuéntamelo. No, muéstrame ya. Cuéntamelo <ríe> todo. <ríe> Uh, OBHU was saying, I love the composition on this. I think Jungi would be happy with this painting and a smiling face. That would be very nice. Uh, Elaine Shukri was saying, Morning, Danny, Nicolas, and OPL. Elaine. Loving this scarf over the red hair, Danny. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Elaine. Thank you so much. I think uh, the blue pops cool. In the red hair. I like it too. Sergi Arts dice, hola, ole. Sergi. Dice, hola, ole, qué ilusión, ya empezaste a poner pintura. Sergi. Sí. Eh, Diacar dice, hola. Buenas. Hola, Diacar. Nicolás Mijarovic. Number four. Saying hello. Hello, number four. How's it going? Gabriel Pozo dice ¿Quién les viene a la mente con un range amplio contemporáneo? Range ¿Con un range? <risa> ¿Quién les viene a la mente <risa> con... con un range? <risa> Yo decir de qué está sí. hablando Con sí. un range, no, pero ese cambio así Póngale entre, com comillas, ayúdele, sí, póngale sí, entre sí. comillas, Gabriel <risa> Se les viene a la mente con un range Amplio contemporáneo. Besides James. Besides James. James Rodríguez. <ríe> eh, 
con un range amplio, como lo que tú hablabas. Sí. Mm, pues que, creo que hemos hablado más de personas que, que de pronto trabajan en como, como ilustradores que trabajan en la industria. Sí. Como que tienen que... Pero déjame pienso porque obviamente hay más... Sí. Eh... Ay, esta vaina. Oye, no he podido quitarle todos los pelos de la bufanda. Quítatela. No, no la tengo puesta. Ah, entonces ¿a qué? Al micrófono. Ah, Una qué postura pena. y queda dañado. Toca lavarlo. Sí. Eh, ¿Quién pensaría yo? Pienso que Isao tiene un, un, un rango absurdo. ¿Un range? Sí, sí, porque James, James puede hacer, James Jean puede hacer tradicional, cómic, eh, mm. diseño. O sea, es un monstruo. Mm, Isao puede hacer también, yo creo que ese tipo de cosas. Isao trabaja la gran mayoría de las veces, sino siempre de, de la imaginación. Pero si trabajara el natural o si dibujara el natural, es un monstruo. Eh, pienso que Andrew Hem también. Sí. Tiene como un rango así súper, súper amplio. Él puede ser súper juicioso o... O sea, uno ve lo juicioso que él es cuando hace los... Los bocetos del natural, uh -huh. los wash en, en, el, en los cuadernos de él de wash del natural, son preciosos, son de una observación altísima. Eh, y después uno ve cómo mezcla toda esa experiencia eh, cuando hace las, las pinturas de él. Y además hace murales también. Lo mismo estaba pensando de, de Isao, él hace murales, él ha hecho murales también, entonces... Sí, no, yo uf. me quedé en blanco. Sí, son, pero es por el rangue. Entonces, el rangue, ¿no? El, Yo rangué ahí. Sí, te portaste como una ranga. Eh... <risa> eh... Pero creo que si ellos se son... me ocurre alguno, lo digo. Creo que ellos son buena, buena opción. Eh... Ibrahim Salah was saying, Concept Art Association had a town hall meeting Ooh. with Carla Ortiz and Craig Mullins. It's very interesting about AI. It's on YouTube. Mm -hmm. It might change your mind on some things. Oh. Don't know if you watched it. No, I haven't watched it. I know Liad was uh, telling us about that when it was happening. I think it was happening it was around birthday. my birthday. Yeah. In the day, the day of your birthday. Yeah, yeah, I think so. I think that's why it, it was hard for me. I didn't know it was on, on YouTube. I'm going to search for it um, later on this afternoon and, and have a listen. Um, but... Um, Change my mind, uh, just as a summary, but could you could you give me... Because I don't know. I think my mind is at... I don't know. I, I think I'm very objective when I try to see this. I'm, I, I see its potential. I see the risks. And I also see the, um, the benefits. Yeah. So I'm, I'm curious how you kind of see... Or why you see this as, as something that would change the way I, I um, or my stand. Uh, Don's dog music was sending a heart and saying, Tiger Kim Jung Gi, wow. <laughs> Hi, Don's dog music. I like your, um, how do you call that? Like the little image, your little icon. Like avatar or? Yeah, it's like thumbnail? a drawing of a dog. Yeah. With a, like a triangular, I don't know why I said triangular, like a birthday hat. Okay. So, yeah. It's cool. Thank you, Danny. <laughs> You're welcome. Uh, Jay Murillo yeah. was saying hello, everyone. Also, Nicolás, what palette are you using? So, for today, it's Sorn palette. Yeah, simple, simple, simple. Simple with a Z. Mm. Mm. Of Zorn. Mm. Sergi Arts dice: Quizás me confundí, pero fue Steve Houston quien te dio clases en Nueva York. No, no, no. Steve Asell. Steve Houston, no. Steve Houston creo que estaba. Él creo que siempre estuvo, fue en la otra costa, en la costa oeste. Steve Wheat was saying: Love you too. Love you too. I love you too, man. No, you too, like you and me. Oh, oh. I mean, but I still love you. Yeah, I love you too. Uh, oh, yeah, so they were so saying, bad. love you too. Not only about painting, but just your insights. Keep it up. 
No, thank you, Steve. That's so nice. Um, Gav Gav. Mm. So. So. Katya? No, I have to pee. Okay, you have no, to I leave. Have to sneeze and I have to pee. Okay, or don't. Don't worry. Or don't. Are you okay there? So take it off. No, the thing. The thing. If you want, let's change. The, grab mine. Oh, it's a, what's, it's a, oh, it's dirty. So take it off. It's okay. That that pop little filter is fine. Like you're you're gonna. Sorry, I had to sneeze. You're gonna you know hiss a little bit, but who cares? Hello. Yeah, I think it your... sounds super weird. No, and it's weird not feeling it, like in the nose. Put the headphones and and you can put your headphones to know. And no, you can I'm listen good. to yourself. I'm good. I'm good. Yeah, but I'm gonna scream today. No, it's okay. But yeah, take it off if that if it's giving you like an allergy. Take it no, off. No, it's not an allergy. The thing is that it has like the little, like hairs of the yeah. scarf, and they just like tickle my nose, so they make me want to sneeze. You know, you you can start a little bit apart, like a little bit. You can start a little bit apart. You can Come stand on. like you could or sit like. I know. I, I like know to, we have mics like that like you need these. to be close, Hello? but you don't. You know, you can be a little bit farther away and just up up your gain, and that's. Fine. You know, I did something. Uh huh. No, it does not fit. I just uh, Danny, put it can, upside down. No, I just take can, it off. It's good. Okay. So, so Gav Gav. So mm -hmm. Katya. Mm -hmm. Hey Katya. Katya was saying hello, hello. Better late than not here at all. Danny, I think I have your virus. It's nasty and I'm tired, but I think I turn a corner. It's been over 10 days. Oh my God. <sighs> Katya, I hope it's not what I had. I love how you I was became patient for... zero for this. It's like, <laughs> yeah. I have your virus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's like, I spread it throughout the world. Through the much. world, yeah. By the live streams. Uh, but I hope it's not mine, Katya, because I was sick for a month. So I just like cross my fingers that it's not. And Katya was also saying, yes, very excited about this painting. Curious about the background. Oh, I think it's going to not quite be like a line decker, you know, where it's this very stark uh, light. But it's probably going to be like a, a little value, like a change in value. So the lightest is going to be on the far left. But then in here, it's just going to be like a grayer, like a value. Um, I don't know. Zero to ten, zero being darkest dark. I think it would be a nine or an, you know eight and a half, eight nine eight eight and a half or nine. Let's <laughs> say around there. So I'm gonna do a a weird pronunciation, but then you're gonna get why. Because Luis Monroy was saying "Hola, Kim Jung Geiger." Get it like tiger. So mm. they said Kim Jung Gi, oh. a little line and ger. Okay. So. Yeah. Hey, Luis. How are you? And they were saying LOL. <laughs> uh, Dunn's Dog Music was saying love the coloring. So like the color in the painting. Yeah, we're still, it still feels like coloring. Uh, we're going to try to make it, we're going to try to flesh it out a little bit. Oh, but it's because of this, because I mean, maybe they said this when you were like scumbling. Yeah, but but it's still very much to me. It's um, it's th it's still you know the start of it. So we we still have to model quite a bit the form. Andres Pinzon. Que Andres. Dice hola Nico y Dani. Hola Andres. Qué, ¿Qué tal? dice Andres? Eh, Sergi Arts dice ja ja ja. Tipo. Tipo. <laughs> eh, Camila Ogorman. Una competencia tipo. Como el retrato. No, pero ese tipo... es rarísimo. Eso es, eso es Centurion Vintage. Camila Ogorman. Camila. Who's saying, thank you. Trembling hand would help atmospheric painting. Oh, for sure. Yeah, because if it's trembling hand and you want to go for detail, no. You're done. Done. You're dumb? What? Done, done, done. D-O-N-E. Don't call me dumb three times. What the hell? 
Steve Weed was saying, glad to hear why you use the red pencil. Uh, so yeah, yeah, yeah. I think there's a lot of people that think that there is like a like a very important reason or like a there's like decision wise like changing structural changing this <laughs> I don't know, reason yeah, why you decide got, to get use get the there. you're gonna get there at some point. <laughs> uh go for it. That you decide to use the red pencil, but it's not. You Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's it's close to. Uh, I try to explain it like, um, you know how in uh, I I gave this example like a while ago, but you know how in comic books, um, artists used to draw with a non-reproducible um, blue pencil, because when you would make, you know, when you would uh, finally, I don't know, scan the pages or do whatever it is that you would do to reproduce those pages, um, the blue wouldn't reproduce. The blue lines wouldn't wouldn't reproduce. Mm -hmm. So they would do their sketches with blue and then they would, you know, tighten either their pencil or they would go, they would go straight to inks um, and they would feel okay because none of that blue would come out in the final reproduction. Yeah, it was like invisible ink. Yeah. yeah. So, and and what's funny is that nowadays that is completely moot because, you know, that doesn't matter anymore. Mm -hmm. Like but obsolete. There are, yeah, but there are people that still do their drawing, like a, like a loose underdrawing with like a, a blue pencil. Just because, yeah. A blue it's color just, pencil. Yeah. So... It's kind of like the same reasoning, I feel. You know, it's like when you see people that don't... I mean, I'm, th I'm, I'm thinking about like a very specific thing that happened. Okay. So I went to the mall. And okay, I had to go to the highly specific. I had to go to an ATM. Okay, getting more specific. And there's like a bunch of ATMs. Yeah. And there was one... I mean, there was a line to go to the ATMs. But there was one that was empty. Yeah. And I asked to the person in front of me, like, is it working? And they were like, no, I don't know. They haven't been going there. And I asked to the other person, is it working? And they were like, no, I don't know. So I, I was like, I'm going to ask. And I went to the first person and they were like, no, I don't know. They're not using it. So I was like, do you mind if I go and see if it's working? And it was working. Yeah. <laughs> but it's so funny because people just see people doing something and they, and they just like emulate because they just like start understanding that as a norm yeah so it just made me think about that <laughs> uh it's the cold brew nicolas I'm yeah sorry. yeah you just this is the kind of all um, of us sheep so yeah sure no because i've Blame always it on the coffee no i've been there a Blame thousand it times. on the coffee sure no um sophie dice fue un concurso organizado por anep en, conmemoras en conmemoración a Vaz Ferreira, que es un filósofo uruguayo bastante importante aquí. Y el concurso tenía varias categorías, dibujo y pintura, escultura, serigrafía y talla en madera. Éramos tres finalistas en cada una y gané el primer premio en dibujo y pintura. Junto con otra artista de aquí que también presentó otra obra re linda. Nos dieron dinero para hacer la obra y además un certificado. La exposición de las obras va a ser itinerante por un tiempo y después mi pintura se quedará en la facu de humanidad de que fue fundada Uy, la Sophie. Por, Felicitations. por Vaz Ferreira estuvo bastante linda la experiencia y me sirvió de excusa para pintar algo grande en fin, jaja, saluditos que me tengo que ir a la facu muchas ganas de ver cómo progresa esta obra está quedando increíble váyase a la facu y felicitaciones mmm Robin awesome. Turner was saying, if you draw with blue or red pencil, you're a sheep. No, no, no. Of course, Pretty that's much. not what I was saying. Pretty much. And they not. were sending a, was... like a little face with the tongue out. So, no, no, Pretty no. Pretty much. No. We got the message, Danny. I love... Loud and clear. No, because I see... And I think that we gravitate... Like, we as humans, we gravitate we towards... We sheep? The, we sheep we, kind or you? We as sheep. Uh-huh. We as humans. Uh, gravitate towards red a lot. 
Uh, yeah, so, that color is um, instinctual, primal. It's very say, yeah. attractive. Like if you see a drawing made with a red pencil, it's attractive. Yeah. So so I'll I'll try to expand. Like let's be super serious for like a second, and I'll try to put my uh, artist hat on. Mm -hmm. Um, I have my my uh, baseball cap on, but uh, let's put my my artist hat on. And I think the reason I keep using it. The, the red pencil is because at times throughout the painting, I'll leave the red pencil. I'll, I, I won't really paint all of, you know, like all the color that, that is supposed to be covering this um, underdrawing and then, you know, underpainting. And I absolutely adore it, how it looks. Like, like really, when it really filters. Like, yeah, yeah, I really so like good. how it looks. So there is a reason. I mean, there is. And I think... Um, just the saturation of it and the hue of it um, pushes through the painting far more than if I were to use, let's say, um, an earth color pencil mm -hmm. or like a blue pencil or like a green pencil. I think the red just kind of like pushes through, mm -hmm. you know, in a very um, not aggressive way, but it just like lives through those layers of painting quite beautifully. So that's going to be my non capricious but you know still somewhat superficial reason for uh, yeah but let's say that, that that's the reason that came after the fact of after, just yes. taking the pencil and then seeing how yes it reacted with your painting yeah because i had you know i i didn't do this i usually mm. for larger paintings which is what i used to do um if i if i would have an underdrawing it would be done with charcoal so I, you know, I rarely, if ever, had used, like, color pencils to do anything, really. Steve Weed was saying, yes, I get it. Did comic coloring for the years. And Steve was also saying, and I just want to say, Danny, you're a perfect host for the channel. I adore Nick and now you. Ooh. Thank you. Thank you, Steve. Thank you so much. Uh, yeah, because I think I was, like, we've already... Uh, established that people thought that i was not true mm -hmm. like i was that you invented me yeah, yeah when i was uh editing the videos canadian my canadian girlfriend but now no no what canadian girlfriend that it's just i, mean, I know it's a joke i was trying to like add to the joke with okay. a uh but um but yeah now you can see me and my like listen to my lame jokes but I'm happy to be here always. Uh, Gabriel Pozo dice, ja, 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 pues sí. Sí, Gabriel, no sabíamos que Gabriel tenía gemelo. ¿Y al gemelo también le gusta el arte? Gabriel. Eh, Carla Anglada was saying, thank you, Nicolás. I'm grateful for you too and OPL. Daniel Nicolás, I think you sp inspire us to be more courageous. Ay, Carla, you're always so nice. Carla, it's very it's hard to find, but you should look for um there's a series that Sophie Jodouin did uh of paintings of her mother that is just absolutely gorgeous. You should try to search for it online. I don't know if there's a catalog made of um of that show because that was actually like a whole show. Um and I forget what her gallery is called, something leaf in, in Canada. Uh Believe. Do you want me to look for it? Yeah, can you look for it, Danny? How? Uh, can... Sophie Jodouin. I know she was in New Zones. I don't know if that gallery's still going, but maybe if there's somebody. Uh, gallery, maybe. Yeah, maybe if there's somebody in um, like a Canadian. Uh... Maybe if we have like a Canadian friend here in our audience. see because in their instagram who's no it would be it would be her gal like maybe going to her page and, and yeah no no i'm there and trying to see let's see no, not this one. Uh, 
I, all I'm saying is like, um, maybe you could contact the gallery to see if they have a catalog of that uh, show. Maybe they put out a catalog. Maybe it's available. Maybe, maybe. I think it's a big maybe, but it, it would be worth uh, searching out. Mm. It's okay. Um, no, I, I just closed the yeah, tab okay. already. Yeah, but if, if, you, if you look for her galleries um, and just ask if they have a, a catalog on, on the show. Oh, Katya said... Galer Galerie uh -huh. de Bellefue. Ah, I Belle don't know how to say Bellefue. Bellefue. Okay, a lot of Belle today. Uh, yeah, so the uh, beautiful flower. Um, Camille Ogerman is saying, I'm in Canada right now. Oh, nice. Oh, the traveling Camille. Yeah. Camille around the world. Oh, Jesus. Your mom was saying, hello, oof, great, great, great. And clapping emojis. I almost feel my mom <laughs> writes that before she notices what we're doing. <laughs> uh, she's so nice. I mean, and she's your mom. She's always going to be your biggest fan. Yeah. So. Um, but I'm sure we could do a video like, you know, picking dead rats from the sewer. And my mom just clicks on it before she sees what we're doing. We're like knee deep, <laughs> you know, in rat poo. She's like amazing genius painting <laughs> i i think it's funny because i remember my mom i told you that my mom joined a live stream the last time yeah and she was commenting like i can't hear you i can't hear you danny danny there's no sound i can't hear you but everyone was commenting to what we were talking yeah. So almost. I told my mom, like, mom, I, th I, I think, think it's you your had it. Yeah, I think, I think you had it mute. muted. <laughs> but there were like 20 comments. Oh, that's <laughs> she was amazing. like, Danny, Danielita, hey, Danny. <laughs> so, yeah, I love that. Because maybe she does not realize that the comment is going to be there for everyone to see. Yeah. So it was super funny. Because I was like, they're is, perfect. There, is there no sound? Yeah, but everyone was commenting, perfect. so yeah. Yeah, I love my mom. Uh, let's see. Mm, where was I? Senior, ¿cómo se dice ese ere? Yeah. Senior? Well, what is uh, afterwards? Bob. Yeah, or Sir Bob. Sir Bob. Yeah. Or Senior Bob. Yeah, one of those. Was saying, what prompt did you use? Joke. Mm -hmm. um, Ricard, uh, they were telling us that they were drawing, and I, I asked what, and they were saying, I'm drawing boxes and heads at the moment. So, like, oh, there we go. heads inside boxes, or boxes and heads? I want to know. Um, By the way, not not jokes uh, aside, I have tried. I, I you know this is before um, Kim Jong Gi's passing, but in attempting to understand the range of comprehension of drawing that uh, Mid Journey had, I tried to feed it, you know, stuff like um, do this in the style of Joseph, Joseph Clevin Cole, or do this in the style of Ashley Wood, or do this in the style of, um, Bernie Wrightson, uh, do this in the style of Henry Cly, or do this in the style of Kim Jong-gi, because I was like, yeah, I think, you know, it understands something, but let me see if I, if, if it can understand like drawing. And um, I did search for that. I did. I was super, super curious to see how much it, it could, if it could, my, you know, answer being unequivocally, no, it does not understand the idea of drawing. It understands how a drawing is supposed to look like, but not the idea of drawing um, at all, like at all. So, um, so yeah, I actually, you know, no jokes. I actually did search quite a bit. For uh, not only, you know, in the style of Kim Jong-gi, but in the style of, you know, all these people that I thought were, you know, great examples of drawing. 
just to see how how it would you know navigate whatever it was um, constructing. So, uh, so, so now that you were talking about Mid Journey, yeah, Ibrahim Salah said, "No, I just mean you might discover something you didn't know, like me, maybe." They bring in a lawyer and an AI ethic man. AI ethic man? I guess, you know, I guess there are ethics to AI. I mean, to the broader definition of AI. It's like uh, when they were doing stuff with genetics. You know, when they had the uh, the ear grow out of the uh, little um, no, 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 mouse. No, no, I'm just curious. Or mal or yeah, but I'm just curious. The, the sheep? No, me acuerdo. The, the um, cloned sheep? Uh, Molly? No, no, I forget now. Mally? Mallory? Mallory, no. Mallory would be good. Dolly. Dolly. Dolly, go. yeah. So, yeah, there are ethics. There are, like, you know, there's there's a huge ethical aspect to that. So yeah, No, I no, no. I was that. just curious because they were saying they bring in a lawyer and an AI ethic man. Yeah, it's, I mean, it sounds like a highly specific job, but it, it yeah, sounds it, like a very... Very real job for the future. Yeah. MCLA Film was saying DNA, hi from Massachusetts, David. And they were saying Dolly. Yeah, so Dolly. Dolly, Dolly. Who, what, what was the name that you said? Mallory. Mallory? Yeah. Yeah, no, that was the, no uh, Mallory. I know. She was, she was just more annoying. Mallory. Mm, Christian. Ba uh -uh. That's how she buzz. Christian Yak Martinez was uh -huh. saying, this looks incredible. So thank you, Christian. You know, now that we're talking about um, those rights, because they had a lawyer, I'm guessing like, you know, a copyrights or fair use lawyer. So you're going back to the AI conversation. Well, no, I'm, I'm opening it up to, uh, to something that we discuss here uh, from time to time, which is like copyrights and fair use. Mm-hmm. There are two ongoing things that I um, that I noticed in my I don't know where I saw them, so somewhere mm -hmm. in my you know navigating. Mm -hmm. um, so there is a Jean Paul Gaultier um, shirt, sweater, whatever I don't know what it's called. Mm -hmm. That it's using the uh, Birth of Venus Botticelli, Birth of Venus, a reproduction of the Uffizi's um, Birth of Venus. Mm -hmm. uh, and I'm saying the Uffizis is because they are the caretakers, owners, uh, temporary, I don't know, of the copyrights of the uh, Birth of Venus. And they're going to sue because mm. he reproduced the Birth of Venus in one of his um, apparel, I don't know, whatever, uh, without asking for permission. Oh. So they're going to sue. And the other one is that the photographer that took... Prince's uh, photo for um, a silk screen that Andy Warhol did. Mm -hmm. She is suing also, I guess, the estate of Andy Warhol um, uh, because for for fair use again. So there are courts. I'm guessing that the the more clear case is the one in, in Italy because apparently. In Italian, what I read was that in Italian um, copyright law, I mean, copyright law has like a universal aspect, but it also has to abide by local, you know, uh, more specifics that are, you know, vary from country to country. Um, and I guess in Italian law, the image, what I understood is that stuff like that, because it belongs to the Uffizi, it belongs to like Florence. Mm -hmm. So... It is almost like protecting something that is Florentine. Like patrimony. Yeah, almost. Which is very, I mean, it's a strange way of putting it. But I guess if the Uffizi uh, is financed by, you know, the people, not the people of Florence, but just the vast number of um, mm -hmm. tourists that go there every year. But then that money goes not only into the you know, maintenance of, of the museum and the pieces in it, but also to Florence, then I can see like a bigger picture of why they want to protect uh, that, you know, those those reproductions. Mm -hmm. But I was thinking about this and, and we'll talk about the uh, Prince one after this one. I was thinking about this. So they're very protective because it's uh, Jean-Paul Gaultier. So I don't know much about fashion, but I know that he's pretty big. 
Like that's a big name in fashion, right? And you know, they're they're gonna go immediately for people like that because it's just very, you know, it's it's just unavoidable if he's putting out a collection and you see that it has, you know, this reproduction, right? And it, of I mean it's expensive uh clothing. So right, exactly. they make a bigger profit too. Because they were saying it was a dress, a tank tank top and a pair of pants. The dress was five hundred and ninety euros. Yeah. Tanked up three hundred and twenty euros. Right. And the pants were two hundred and ninety. Right. So Yes, but here's my let me be somewhat of a devil's advocate here. Mm -hmm. I always like playing devil's advocate. So they go for that they go for this guy, rightfully so, right? Rightfully so. Because, you know, he's a well known designer, internationally known. This is like High end, well, not, I don't know if high end fashion. Like, can you see how, how expensive or, you know, how much these cost, these things cost? What is? Any of them that you just described? I just said the price of oh, the sorry. three of them. How, how much is it? Nicolas. No, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I said the dress was 590 euros. Okay. Tanked up 320 euros. Okay. And the pants, 290 euros. So let's say uh, 350 on average, right? 350 on average. Um, but this is like a, like a collection that's probably going to be out. They're probably going to run out of whatever, how many, you know, uh, um, blouses or shirts or whatever you just said, because I wasn't quite paying attention. I noticed. Yeah. <laughs> but... You know, two years from now, it's going to be hard to find this collection, right, Danny? Am I wrong in, like, saying something like that? Two years from now. No, you're good. But okay. but it's it's not been... I mean, it's been out for a while. Okay. Because I'm reading that the Uffizi yeah. send, like, the legal team of the Uffizi send a letter to the fashion house Yeah. with a notice that's in April... That said that they order the company to either like withdraw the items. Yeah, cease and desist. Yeah. Right. Or uh, try to contact wrath. them to wrap up like a commercial agreement. Okay, of course. But they haven't. So oh. that's why now they're going to sue They're going to sue. Exactly. So, yeah, makes sense, right? But am I, am I wrong in, in thinking that this is something that's going to go away like, you know, two years from now maybe? Mm-hmm. Okay. So how how long do you think all the stores, all the little stores that are around museums and like, you know, all these little makeshift places that sell stuff for tourists, how long do you think they've been selling, you know, illegal reproductions oh. of of the, you know, um, Birth of Venus? Yeah, for, many, many years, yeah. Yeah, and do you think the profit of all those little places is significantly bigger than anything that he's ever going to make by selling like, you know, three pieces of apparel. But I think it's harder for, for like, a, fashion, for like a, a, a season. I mean, it's harder for the museum to try and sue every single little store because they don't have control of all those little like places that make a reproduction in a t-shirt and they sell it for 10 euros i don't know but in this one they have a clear way to like to contact them and sue them yeah because it's it would be a smaller window of like reproduction of the image in their apparel but it's going to be a huge amount of money in a small uh period of time I still think the other the people that sell on the street make more money. Yeah, but but you're thinking as a whole, exactly. Yeah. But think that you would have to do like four hundred uh like you would have to sue four hundred little stores. Right, but there's a principle to it, right? I mean, are, is the reason that's like, oh, it's too much. There's too much of it going on for us to care, but now we care. That's my, my that's kind of like my problem. They only care. This is my issue with like fair use and copyright things it's like you only care when somebody famous is doing it people only care when there's like a profit involved when there's like a big enough profit the thing is they can't go to these stores and say hey we want our cut 
like these stores are probably not even like declaring everything they sell like they are probably selling it like you don't get a receipt you don't really get like a like a real receipt when you buy but i think things. that's why it's harder to pursue like suing them yeah but the principle is the same that the fact that it's it's wrong hmm. right the fact that you you just you know you're just saying like hey no i'm sorry but you know this like it it could be as easy as this and and maybe all of this is like black market but wherever the stuff is made it has to come in through some port right it has to it has to like all this stuff that they're selling has to come from somewhere so whenever that you know whenever that merchandise gets into a port and if they see like hey this is a legal reproduction of this you can't bring this here you can stop it there so there are I, i'm sure they're very complex but there are ways of of like tackling this enormous problem but i i always feel i always fear that but wait because i think that in in a port it's not like you have to i mean you have to describe the goods that are entering but you will say shirts You would not say shirts with a reproduction. No, but you open. Of... But they also they always do inspections. I, I mean, this wouldn't be foolproof. But what I'm saying is that if something is illegal, it's illegal, period. Like, wouldn't you agree? If something is illegal, like if somebody's robbing something, if someone's robbing something, you would say, "Hey, that's a crime. That's illegal. You shouldn't be doing that." But you you don't say. Oh, they're robbing over here, and that's fine. But they're robbing, but it's too complicated to try to address the fact that they're robbing people. But in here, it's kind of easier to like address it because it's like you know, it has like um, there's like a bigger eye on this problem, like a, a public eye. So my point has always been, hey, if this is an issue, then it should be like a universal issue, and that's why I'm always like. Hey, if it's a such a complex issue, just leave it alone. Don't like who who cares about these things like reproductions of these things? Like are they not getting enough? Are they not getting enough money? Like that's crazy. Because you could argue, "Oh no, there are little merchants like the, these people that live, you know, um that live in Florence or outside Florence and you know, they they have their little um little stores and they make their money." Uh, but I would argue that compounded all these stores and I'm sure that a lot of these stores because they seem to have like the same merchandise. You know, they're either owned by the same people like under or like there's a mafia underneath or you know or their their provider is one one and the same. So one person is making a lot of money, you know, behind this. So if you are if if the purpose was to just cut everything that is like illegal an illegal form of reproduction then you should go for it you should go like put all your like and if what they're saying is right this is not so much an uffizi thing and it's much more of a florence thing then do it make it a florence thing but to go only when there's like um high profile you know person involved that's when it kind of bothers me i feel and and it's the same thing like when if i work if i do this little somebody took this picture of kim jong gi if i'm doing this it's fine it's one painting and maybe you can sell this painting and it's fine but when warhol did silk uh silk screens it's like oh no that's my photo and you're going to make millions off of my photo no that's where it stops um when uh, richard prince does it and he's making $80,000 per you know uh, uh, instagram photo with a with a new comment that he would you know put in in the photo then it's like hey it started to become a problem when it was $80,000 so i have an issue with that it's like i don't know the fight is about money then it's not, it's not really about rights it's about money so i that's when it gets like kind of dirty for me Because I love the aspect of all of this when it has to do with art and when it has to do with fair use and what it means, what fair use means and how, you know, ridiculously abstract and complex it is to try to define fair use and how a lot of like the, the, the things that, that happen can be forms of precedent, but not really like it's so weird that in, in legal aspects, None of these cases can be universal as forms of precedence. Um, 
because everything is like a case by case basis, everything. Like now there's going to be judges that are going to look at uh, at a photo of uh, Prince and then at a silk and then at the uh, silk screen and they're going to try to interpret how if you know how if if there's anything different about it if there's anything different about it or how it was recontextualized or or how you know how it varied its meaning or how much of it was it was um used like uh was there a justified reason for using a lot of this photograph instead of just a, a section of the photograph um that it's so so weirdly abstract that uh i think i don't know i don't know how much we we grow i i find it you know fascinating when these things happen because i always love to to know how the law interprets like these um these things in art i mean in the john paul gautier thing it's it's more of a product it's more like it's clear cut that this is like merchandise so there's not much that you could say in terms of oh we're recontextualizing it or i don't know like if is something on a shirt not recontextualizing it i don't even know i don't even know how to interpret those things so i find the conversations fascinating i i really really do but i i don't think i'll ever ever change in my life even if it affects me so this is pretty like damning for me and and you guys can play me this audio you know in 20 years when somebody is just um copying all the our painted lives uh videos and making you know millions off of them <laughs> but i i always tell people oh do use anything that i've ever done you know use it use it as much as you want as much as little as you want push it as much as you want change it as much as you want you know this is amazing it's i love that people push that way because i just don't i don't know i think the reinterpretation of images um has been part of of art's dna forever forever so to to suddenly just you know excise it from from art and say no 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 there are you know rights here that are involved um I just don't I don't know. I'm not into that. Not at all. Pankernik was saying also famous people has more reach and will make more money. That's the thing. I don't know if they make more money than the people that that are, you know, selling uh reproductions of the Mona Lisa, for example. Yeah, but that's why I'm telling you that mm. it is way easier to sue one established uh store designer than going out and trying to sue 400 little stores but you don't sue the then, 400 little stores you try to see who is who is giving them this merchandise they're not making them in the back you know it's not as if like you go to the back and somebody has like a press and they're just you know printing t-shirts they're getting all this merchandise and what you say, i get what you're saying but i hope i hope that you get what i'm saying too like No, 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 I get it. I get it. I'm just trying so to see both. So is it a both. legal problem or is it like a problem of being complicated? Like, oh, no, that's too much. That's too much work. But I also think that... But then that... it's like, it's not too much work. I mean, you go to Rome. How many stores are there in where they sell, you know, all these reproductions of all these images that you're seeing? But I think that Rome ben like has a benefit, like the museums, for example, the Vatican has benefits of those little stores that sell things that make people want to go to the museum but i think that maybe but you what they're argue, thinking what no yeah you could argue that a, a shirt is visibilize visibilizing no that's making visible in a in a different context a piece of art and it may spur the same conversation of people wanting to go yeah see. but i think that maybe they they say okay for example in the vatican they have a store They say, yeah, they're selling like bootleg versions outside. But if a designer is going to sell something, they're going to take out of their market. Like what they sell in the store of the museum. Yeah, how much though? I'm, Nicolas, I'm trying to think right, as the museum. Right, but let's be serious. How much of a dent can you make? I'm Again, I'm guessing if they are more, if that's their, their um, argument... 
I'm sure the dent is always bigger by the, you know, the places that are making these illegal reproductions. I mean, both places are making illegal reproductions, but the ones that sell massively mm. are probably making like a, if, if, if that is the problem, then those places are making like bigger dents. Me encantó que Camila Ogorman dijo, se distrajo Nico. Y unas no caritas pide? de emoji riéndose. No, cuando yo leí los... Yo dije, mira, en este dicen cuánto costó cada prenda. Ah, sí, sí. Es esto, que estaba... esto y esto. Y tú sí, había como ropa. ¿Cuánto costaba? Sí, perdón. Puedes no buscar si estaba... y yo... No sé si estaba pintando o no parando bolas. No, no estabas parando bolas porque tenías quieto el pincel. Sí, de pronto. <ríe> eh... Andrés Mensa was saying, hi guys, maybe what Daniela is trying to say, that if in ports they receive any kind of ob objects such as shirts or mugs, authorities could not, couldn't know or prove that this merchandising is going to be used to reproduce art illegally. No, you can know. You, you know where it's headed. You know, it's not, it's not difficult to, to know if something is like an illegal reproduction of something. Sam and Kutcher was saying, okay, I'll say it. Um, M and most people are all for taking big corporations to court for copyrights, but taking little mom slash dad shops to court does not look good on people. Don't like seeing someone punching down. Yeah, but that's the thing, right? It's like, then is it a matter of, le of legality? Because again, it's, it's if about it's legal, like, I mean, what they're saying is that when you are getting a big profit because you're a big company, then the museum is okay by saying, okay, let's do it. Because they are like a million dollar store that are making money out of this. So they could, if they want to, pay for the rights of the reproduction. But it's different to say, hey, I'm going to go to this little store in the outside of the Uffizi. I'm just going to sue them and make them close their store. Like their little business. That is, of course, not a million dollar business. Right. And I know that you're talking about like the bigger, the producers of those merchandise that just like distributed to all the people around those little stores. But I get the point of what Salmon is saying. I mean, the, the museum's not going to pursue a legal fight with every single store. Like the little, I don't know, where... Again, but that's... Like the little, little places that I know, that's still... I know, but we're going on circles here. I, I know, I know. I know that that's... It, it, like, I understand your argument that, that yes, they're not going to just, you know, send uh, cease and desist notices to 200 you know, establishments uh, throughout the city. Um, you know, but you, you don't, you, you try not to stop them. You try to stop the person that is providing them with something that's illegal. Because my point in all of this is like, if it is illegal, it's illegal, period. Mm -hmm. Period. Like, why, why do you draw the line because somebody's making more money? What do you mean? Like, what's, like, is that the criteria? Because a famous person is making more money Hmm. then that's where you draw the line. But it has always been illegal. It's like, that's, I don't understand that. Like for me, if it's illegal, it's illegal. Like there's, if there's a law that prohibits it, it's illegal. But it doesn't become illegal just because somebody famous does yeah. it. Or more illegal. That's like getting more pregnant. No, you're pregnant or you're not pregnant. So I don't know. I don't, I just don't get it. That, the, 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 the really kind of, gray area that this you know that this whole argument i think that what we are exhibiting by by trying to justify it with our arguments the fact that it's such a gray area that always pushes me to say okay then i give the benefit to the to the artist always a hundred percent i will give it a hundred percent to the artist all the time steve weed was saying nicolas you talk like i would talk if i did One of my paintings is going to the president of the USA. I'm happy, but I am completely humble. If someone wants to share my work, it makes me happy. Mm, Pankernik was say, saying, also, how will the small stores pay them? 
No, it wouldn't be a matter of paying them. It would be a matter of like, like shutting prohibiting them down. the yeah. yeah. Beth H was saying hi, Danny Nicolas. You mentioned fashion, that is the most copied design and art industry. Everyone copies. Uh, Salmon Kutcher was saying, what kind of small shop is making a shirt with a drawing, parented, printed, I think, on it for four hundred dollars? That seems like a good place for me to make a quick money. No. Salmon, is it? Yes, yeah, Salmon. No, Salmon. They're not selling a shirt for $400. They're selling 400 500 shirts. shirts for a dollar. Yeah. So that their their game is numbers. Their their game is never just... I mean, and they, <laughs> they overprice things like you can't believe. Do you remember how much the shawl was? How much this American girl paid for a shawl? Oh, yeah, because they were asking me. A little me. veiled shawl. Yeah, because they were asking me. In the Pantheon. How was it? Ten they euros? asked me. No, they asked me Eight? ten. I said no, and they said five. And I was like, no, thank you. And then they said to someone in the line, 25, I think, or 20. Twen yeah, and they just I think it was it 25, and they paid 25. And I was like, you were selling it to me in five, and you would still get yeah. a profit from it. Yeah. And now you're selling it in 25. So, yeah. So, uh, Salmon yeah. Kutcher was saying, was it a handmade shawl? No. No, no, no. no, no. It was outside the Pantheon because you have to cover your elbows and knees. So there's a lot of people that don't know and they don't go with their knees. And and I mean, not people because it, it's dumb, but it's... Not, well, I'm, I'm not going to judge, but it's women. I mean... Women yeah. can not be seen with their shoulders or knees uncovered. So uh, there's people that know and they just like go there with a lot of uh, shawls and they sell them in the outside, like the, in the entrance. Because there's people doing the line and if they don't have their elbow, er, elbows... <laughs> Uh, ¿cómo se llaman? Shoulders. Shoulders and knees covered. They can't get in. So they just, like, ask for more money because they know that you want to go in. But no, no, no. It's not, like, handmade. It's No. Yudaki was saying hi. And Beth H. was saying hi. Mm, let's see. Cacaito dice, hello, como van? Hola, Cacaito. Muy bien, y tú? Um. Okay. No, no, no. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm, I'm. Oh, I thought you said yeah. No, I'm grumbling here. Oh, okay, okay. But when I make brush strokes that I don't want to make. Mm. Pankernik dice, ¿Dónde estudiaste, Nico? Por cierto, soy argentino y me encanta cuando hacen el acento. <laughs> grande, grande. Gracias, Pankernik. Eh, yo estudié en una escuela que se llama School of Visual Arts en Nueva York. Mm. Let's see. Marcelo Peralta was saying hi, Danny, Nico, and chat. Hey, Marcelo, how are you? Uh, Simon Kutcher was saying, what is the joke? Is it Canadian girlfriend more than normal girlfriend? No, no, no. It's like, I think it's a joke. Let me explain it to see if I got it right. Okay. I think it's like when you're lying about having a girlfriend. I mean, yeah. the saying is like, you're lying and you're like, no, 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 she's Canadian. So it's like Canadian girlfriend. So yeah, that you haven't... Like you're in the States and you say, yeah, it's a Canadian girlfriend. So that's like the... That's how you're justifying that no one knows that the girlfriend. No, nobody hasn't met her. Exactly. Yeah, that's, the, that's it. Yeah. Hmm... Steve Weed was saying, no, I understand how much you both work. Amazing. You both inspire me. Uh, I want to paint like Nicolas and be as sweet as you. LOL. <laughs> oh, this is, that's very nice. Yes. Were we, were we saying something to doubt? No, no, no. no when they were, no, no, because I'm going back in the comments. Okay, yeah. Cause I and this was when they were saying that. They just wanted to say, Danny, you're a perfect host for the channel. I adore Nick. And now you. And then oh. they said that. So. Mm. But thank you, Steve. That's so, so nice. Um, 
Gabriel Pozo nos habla de su gemelo. Sí. Y ya sabemos el nombre. Germán. Julián. Je Julián. Je Julián. Eh, dice, sí, a Julián le encanta el arte más contemporáneo, algo que comparto con él, pero son artistas como eh, Jude Sierra, Noguchi, eh, Twombly, Moore, etcétera, etcétera, etcétera. Mm. Ah, pero chévere que a los dos les guste el arte. Eh, y viene de los papás, eso, Gabriel. No sé si estoy ya preguntando cosas muy personales. Sí, sí, eh, tranquilo. Tranquilo. Tranquilo, conteste tranquilo. No, sí, ¿qué es eso? <risa> tranquilo, yo. Se si calma. No, no, pues sí, no, tranquilo, no sí, hay que sí contestar. Sí, sí, se calma. Eh, eh, <risa> qué raco. Eh, Gabriel Pozo dice, no necesariamente, entre comillas, contemporáneos, modernos, signo de pregunta. No sé, todas estas calificaciones que no importan. LOL. Eh, Let's see. Javier Ugarte. Javier estaba hablando eh, al principio del video de mi bebida de hoy. Mm. Pero creo que Javier no lo escuchó. Pero bueno, Javier dice, hola Dani y Nico. Hello everyone. Aquí pintando junto a ustedes sobre panel un rostro frontal. Qué bueno. Qué chévere, Javier. ¿Y de qué formato es? Tengo curiosidad. ¿Tú estás que le quieres decir a Javier lo que te estás tomando? No, ya no, porque tiene que devolverse en el video a escuchar. No, pero él entendería la referencia. Tiene que, Javier. Javier. No, pero no lo Javier. Ya regaña, regañaste a Gabriel. Qué tranquilo, qué calmado le dijiste. Javier, Estaba por recalmado. favor. Javi no, Gabriel. Javier, no. Gabriel súper calmado y tú tranquilo. ¿Cuál Gabriel? Javier. ¿Qué? No, pots, pots. Ah, Gabriel pots, también. Pots. Los dos tranquilos, ya no más. <risa> eh, MCLA Film. So David was saying the ship should have been called Dali. Dali. Yeah. And Pankernik was saying Dali E, draw Dali in the style of Dali. Oh, God. <laughs> That's like. That's the, a great uh, name for a contemporary piece of uh, yeah. work, artwork. Or that's like the meme of the French uh, translation. Uh, yeah, the. Uh, don 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 yeah, don yeah, yeah, don. Yeah. Um, let's see. Mm, Steve Weed was saying, Nicolas, can you talk about how important your drawings are for your paintings? Um, sure. Not, not, not. Um. I mean, in, in the construction of this particular painting, sure, the drawing does play like a really big role um, because that how that's how it's been. Um, that's how the 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 making of this painting has been sort of organized. So, yeah, it's essential because that's what gives you a sort of foot, like a sense of footing, you know, and and confidence that you can take the next step and you can build on something that uh, feels solid enough, let's say. Um, but I would say like a, a bigger sense of drawing is far more important, n far more important. Not, not so much the one that is um, making reference to line work um, and line work that usually precedes the painting of something if you're going to do a painting. I wouldn't say that that's the sort of drawing that I would um, that I would think of as as being you know relevant. Um, so I, I would say there's a there's a broader definition of drawing that's far more important. That is like that it has to do with um, with I mean I don't want to speak too abstractly, but it has to do with rhythm and has to do with pacing and has to do with shapes. And has to do with choreography of those shapes, the the disposition of those shapes inside a you know certain parameter. Um, I think that's what drawing, like a, a broader understanding of drawing, means or or starts to um, suggest. Let's say, um, and that one is absolutely essential, like quintessential to the to the building process of of a painting of any image. But that one 
doesn't necessarily abide by the rules of just making you know thin lines over like thin darker lines over a lighter substrate which is a, a really really traditional way of understanding drawing mm, Pankernik was saying cover your elbows people <laughs> yeah uh Cacaito dice todo bien como les fue con lo del libro el lunes muy bien, Cacaito, estábamos diciendo que no habíamos podido, no, ya no se puede grabar, entonces pues no pudimos subir nada de historias, pero nos fue muy bien, afortunadamente. Um, Salmon Kutcher was saying, I asked because handmade clothes are expensive. Uh, I think... I've been watching people making clothes from scratch and it's a long process from making yarn to making the final clothing. It is a long process. Oh, for sure. Oh, any, any I mean, anything, anything made by hand. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Handmade things are expensive, like period. But no, the, the things they sell to cover uh, for the, like outside the, the Pantheon. Or anywhere. They, yeah. They are not handmade. No, they're, they're, they're like bought in yeah. bulk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. No PHN Molina mm -hmm. was saying, I watch all your videos, but this is the first time I've caught one live. Happy to be here. Oh, awesome. Oh, so cool. Happy to have you here. PHN Molina. So uh, let me know if it's, if I'm doing a, Terrible pronunciation. Um, Steve Wheat was saying, would you ever do a workshop in Colorado? Oh, nice. I haven't been to Colorado. Uh, who do we know in Colorado? Mm. AJ? I think so. I think AJ. I'm terrible with, I don't know. Yeah, I like think locations? I, I think haven't. AJ. But I think we have like a, a few people here that are from Colorado. Um. But yeah, I would love to. I would love to. Um, we have to get invited, though. Yeah. Like usually, how um, workshops work for uh, us is that just people send in an invitation, and they already have the venue. You know, they can take care of our fee, our uh, um, transportation, and our stay. So that's that's what usually a workshop entails. Yes. But if um, If you know of people that do workshops and they think I would be, um, I would make sense for, you know, the stuff that they usually offer, then of course. Yeah. Everywhere in the world. Oh, I love, oh my God. If art gives me a chance to travel, that's yeah. one of the most beautiful things in the world. Steve Witt was also saying, and I love how you can make amazing paintings with cheap brushes wow well this one's very cheap this one's not so cheap yeah this one's like a da vinci maestro and the other one this one's a da was... vinci mini maestro no that was <laughs> a da like Minci. a and that was like a danny Daninci. daninsky cheap no daninsky sounds like kolinsky say yeah or something so danielinsky uh chipinsky chipinsky pensilinsky okay Uh, Javier Ugarte dice, sí, llegué tarde. ¿Qué tomaste hoy? Hoy Javier estaba diciendo... Ah, bueno, sigan los que... dos. No, ya se me acabó. Iba a mostrar, pero estaba... Me tomé un cold brew, que yo nunca tomo café, pero me los compré en la tienda. Un cold brew con creamer de almendra. Qué pero bomba. el cold brew me tiene como... Muy energética. Enérgica. Se me traba la lengua y... y todo, ¿sabes? No, no le eche la culpa al café. Eso es de todos los días. Samu, sí. Samu is uh, watching the... Uh, so, I'm a Liverpool fan, which of course means that my son United... Fa my son United... <laughs> ah, <laughs> my son favors Man United. Yeah, just leave it like that. Yeah, my, my son, son United. United. It's the coffee, I'm sorry. Yeah, it's, it's the, the cold brew, yeah. Yeah, it's the cold brew. Yeah. And he's just celebrating a goal. And um, breaking our mattress. Yeah, he he's at the so age like, where he doesn't realize that self-control is is something that exists. And it's important, yeah. 
So he he's uh, over there just yelling and hitting his uh, bed. Our bed. Oh, he's watching it in our room. Yeah. Oh my That's god. That's why I was saying that he's damaging our mattress. Oh Jesus Christ! He's gonna pay for it. Um, no, that means you would pay for it. I'm gonna pay for it. Yeah. <laughs> um, let's see. Um, Gabriel Pozo dice no nada que ver. Me encanta. Gracias por las preguntas, Dani. Jaja. <laughs> no viene de familia. Es algo muy raro. Nadie en la familia es artista. Interesante, ¿no? Sí. Pues porque además si sí es algo de los dos hermanos. Sí. Interesante, sí, interesante. Sí, sí. Lo pienso yo con mi hermana, que mi hermana no es gemela, pero... No. Pues no tenemos los mismos intereses. No. Hay cosas que compartimos, pero es que siento que el arte puede ser como muy específico. No, pero ¿crees? Pues sí, o sea... Sí. No sé. Pues, pero de pronto, porque en mi caso particular, mi hermana no es que le interesara el arte. Pero yo fui el único de cinco hermanos. Sí, pero tu mamá era artista. Por eso. Entonces, bajo ese argumento, más personas tendrían que haberse afectado. No. Pero lo normal es que la gente sea distinta. Por eso me refiero a que creo que lo normal es que todo el mundo sea como distinto. Por eso digo que es curioso lo de Gabriel. Javier dice, formato 20 por 30 centímetros. Eh, gracias, Javier, por responder mi pregunta. Esos cambios de conversación. <laughs> mm, parting Mist was saying, great image, very great. Um, Nicolás, say thank you. Thank you so, thank you so much. Um, mm, Salmon Culture was saying, Nicolás, you're a big fan of Master Kim. Yes. I wanted to ask if you also are a fan of Katsuya Tarada. Tarada. They, they type okay. Tarada, so. Who is an artist that inspired Kim Jong-gi when he was young. Um, yeah, yeah, of course. I, I mean, uh, he, he has his own influences that, of course, mean the world to him. Um, but, um, but yeah, 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 of course. I mean, I'm sure we were not, we're not going to share, um, we're not going to share like every single influence. I've, I've noticed that with a lot of artists that I care about, that when they speak about the artists they care about, I'm always like, really? That's a little strange. I, I don't feel the same, but I think that that's just the nature of being different human beings. That's all it is. But, um. But yeah, so I think it's okay when you don't necessarily like everything that somebody that you admire likes. It's it's totally fine. It doesn't say anything about... It's not like an obligation for you to like the same things then. It, I think it's actually healthy when you realize, oh, we're different. Um, but where you meet is in the... Um, in the um, respect for this particular person. Camille O'Gorman dice, Dani, prepárale un brew para Nico. Y un, un emoji de un gati corriendo. No, yo no tomo café. No, yo no sé tú cómo reaccionaría. Es que además este es muy fuerte. No, pues es que no, tomo, no me lo tomo. O sea, sí. Sí, sí, sí. No, no, no. Yo no tomo eso, señora O'Gorman. Señora Camille. Eh, gaf, gaf. So, Katia was saying, I'm off to start Chipin, Chipinski brush label. Yeah. They will be trash. Oh, sign us in for a couple. Or we want to be early investors. Yeah. Well, but it, the good thing is that it has to be a cheap in, inver, invest, inversion. ¿Cómo digo? Uh, investment. Investment. Yeah. Inversión. I was trying to do like the yeah, it's the coffee direct it's the co translation. It's the coffee. It, it's the coffee. it sure, actually sure. is the coffee. So. Yeah, no, no, no. Nobody's questioning it. I have coffee brain. It's even the coffee when you haven't drank it. <laughs> uh, Rody slash Victor de la Cruz was saying, "Can I get the same effect with acrylic? And any tips on how to match skin tone to make it look believable?" Um, so can you do the same with acrylic? 
I mean, you can uh, not technically because acrylic just behaves a little bit differently. So you would have to be more aware of the times in acrylic. Time by times, I mean like um, the times it stays open, um, which is very very different. Which are vastly different from the times that um, that oil stays open. So oil allows you to you know, have like a bigger window of working on something than acrylics do. But, um, but that's, that would be the one big difference, the one big, um, technical difference. But, um, I guess, um, the lessons are, I would say are the same, like the fundamental lessons of what you're doing are the same. So when you see somebody painting something in acrylic, you can learn even though you're not going to be painting the same in the same uh, technique. So, you know, uh, watching anyone paint anything is, it can be like a, a beautiful um, sort of academic experience, like a learning experience. Like I can learn a ton by watching somebody do a watercolor, even though I, I don't paint like watercolor. And watercolor is something that is very, very different from oil painting. Um, you know, it's, it's fundamentally different because it's a, a subtractive medium instead of being additive. I mean, oil can, I mean, you can glaze oil to make it sort of, I guess, you know, feel like a watercolor, but not really. No. But, um, but fundamentally they're, they're just, um, they're quite different. So, but it doesn't mean, my point is that it doesn't mean that because they're, they're that different in, in their construction that you can't learn anything from them. Like that you, you would say, oh no, this is only applicable to watercolor. So I might as well not waste my time watching this demo um, because what I do is oil paint. It's like, no, 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 you can learn a ton from, from how somebody constructs a painting, you know, even if it's on a different technique. Um, but yeah, but the, the specifics are quite different. So the way I handle paint and the um, the way I put paint down and the way I move paint around, it is, you know, almost like knowing, acknowledging that the surface is open enough for me to move it around. So I have room to like work, um, which is not something which is, I guess, the room to work, the the you know the 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 window that you have to work the window of time it's quite different with um with acrylics and the second part of the question said what was any it? tips on how to match skin tone oh. to make it look believable um i mean skin tone can be believable even if the colors are not believable the colors that you're using to paint it are not believable so what, what do I mean by that? So imagine if you are painting somebody in a bar and it only has, you know, at night and it's this like closed space and there's nothing but like red lights, like red, you know, it, it's all super dark and everything is just red lights. Like what it, what does the skin tone look like in that bar? It's just reds, right? It, it wouldn't be this kind of skin that you usually associate by the colors that you would see with a very powerful light source, which is the sun, you know, coming from above, right? That is like our notion of skin comes from that lighting condition. But the truth is skin can be as, you know, malleable as, you know, the, the nature of the, of the light that is, um, of the source of light that is in charge of describing it. So when you think of that, when you think that everything that you're not really painting skin and skin obviously has like local color, for example, I am pinker than Danny, me as a whole, as you know, if, if you would have to try to um, uh, think of a little chip of color that, you know, kind of, um, uh, on average symbolizes like my skin tone, it would be pinker than that of Danny, which would be yellower. In right? this light. 
Yeah, but let's say also, a local color. No, 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 because no, no, no. Just to to tie it with what you were saying. Right, right, right. But if I, you put your skin, right, you know the lighting condition. Right, but but I'm gonna say like a local color because things have color, and I know that mm -hmm. we can only you know we are only conscious of color because of light, but things have local like have a specific local color. Mm -hmm. Um. And, you know, there are people that are, I mean, hard to believe, but there are people that would have like more uh, a lighter skin than I do, more fair skin. And there are people that have darker skin than I do. And they have an those, undertone. Yeah, yeah. And sometimes it's more purple. Sometimes it could be more olive. Some, sometimes it could be more Sienna-ish. Sometimes it could be earthier. I mean, it's as varied as there are colors in, in like, um, in nature. So... Whenever we say skin, I don't really know what we're talking about. Like, I assume I know what we're talking about because sadly, when we say skin, we almost surely are are thinking about lighter skin. Like, that's almost sad to say, but almost 100% of the time, that's what we're thinking. Um, but, you know, my whole life, I've, I, I, was, I was brought up by painting models from different places in this world, you know, different belief systems. Uh, they, they, you know, some of them were models, some of them were dancers, some of them were actors, some of them, you know, were just doing this job because they were, you know, they didn't have any other jobs to do. Uh, some of them were artists. Um, so you get to like sort of meet the person alongside with whomever is modeling for you. And you realize that all of that like compounded is what makes you start to look at you know, skin tone in a very, I don't know. It's a beautiful thing when you do that reflection through painting, I feel. Um, but it also teaches you that, you know, skin is as varied as any human being, any human being walking down the street. It's like, they're all like these different, specific, very particular opportunities to do these almost like um, essays in color. Uh, all of them, all of them, because... Skin also is affected by light, by, you know, UV rays and sunlight. So it doesn't matter if two people would have the same local color. Maybe one has been in the sun more than the other. And it would change dramatically in certain areas of the body. So it's, it's quite fascinating. So when I think, when somebody asks of skin, and don't feel bad, that I, like I'm not singling you out because this is all of us, but there is like a, like a bit of a, not, not prejudice, but yeah, but I guess prejudice in the sense that we we're already thinking of something that we want to paint. We're already like predefining it, and there's nothing worse than attempting to paint something but having a set idea in your brain of what it sh should look like, um, because that's not great. You either say I'm gonna learn through it while I paint, or you either choose to say I'm gonna impose my beliefs of what it what I think or what I, you know, what I believe to be true onto this painting, you know, without, um, without the aid of observation, without the, the, the sort of, um, opportunity that ob observation is giving me to learn something. So I would suggest we have to stop thinking about how do I paint a skin tone, like a realistic skin tone, because again, I would, you know, tell you, let's all go into a, you know, room that has every single wall painted green and let's turn this light with a, that has like a green filter on and let's make a reflection of skin tone there. Like it would be completely different, right? But all that is doing is telling you, yeah, that's, you know, the, your perception of color is entirely dependent on light, on the lighting condition. So we have to be far more conscious about light than we are about skin tone. And when you realize that you have to be far more conscious about light than you are of skin, then you realize that, you know, your job when you're trying to be a sort of naturalist painter or somewhat, you know, naturalist painter, your job is to look at nature and just almost free of prejudice and just observe light, just paint, you know, whatever light is you know, whatever kind of bits of information light is providing to you, treasure them and just try to paint those. But, you know, you, you, you have to choose that path. You have to like, almost like choose to educate your brain and your eyes and, and our own prejudices and, and, 
you know, our own belief system. To, we have to put that, uh, you know, to the side to say, let me just observe nature. And that's going to be my guide. I, th I think that's the best, the very best way to do it. There are ways to make it formulaic for sure, for sure. But um, I have to be honest with you. I would feel like I would be doing you a disservice if I were to just give you formulas of how to paint skin. It just wouldn't feel right for me. So sorry about the long-winded answer, but... Mm, Rowdy or Victor de la, de la Cruz. I don't know why, why I was going to say De La Vega. Uh, you're Victor kind of drunk la... on energy, <laughs> Coffee, I feel. yeah, I'm sorry. Uh, Victor De La Cruz <laughs> was saying, oil lets you blend better and add, huh? Okay, thank you. I love that answer. The colors are my handicap. And they were saying, yes, like Kim's skin color here looks so believable. Um, let's see. And Are you okay, Daniel? You're I'm just wanna, laughing because I have no idea do you what, take a week off why or? I went for De La Vega. <laughs> well, uh, I kind of know why, but I'm not okay. going to say why. Yeah, no, no, don't worry. It's the coffee. It's the coffee. <laughs> no, I'm going to say why. Okay, you want to. Yeah, sure. Because <laughs> uh, there's a character in Jane the Virgin. Okay. That's De La Vega. Yeah. So I went from De La in my brain just like I to completed that. So never mind. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, Richard de los Great. Santos. Oh, God. It's really, they're pushing you here. <laughs> Was saying, that looks awesome. Do you have a Twitter or Instagram that I can follow? I want to see this when you finish it. Oh, for sure. Look, if you see up there in the corner, in the left upper corner on the screen, you can see both of our Instagrams. So the first one is my Instagram. The one uh, below is Nicolas' Instagram and our webpage. So, yes, uh, this painting's going to be posted both in the store. So, it's going to be a a available for purchase. And it's going to be Nicolas' Instagram. Mm. Let's see. Gabriel Pozo dice, Nico, Steven Nacel viene donde vivo, en Nashville. Mm, qué chévere. Y creo que no puedo dejar que pase la ocasión. Me preguntaba si has hablado con Jenny, Jenny Smith de Warehouse 521 en mm. Nashville. Ya sé que hablas con Peggy en Chattanooga. Ah, Peggy, pues con Peggy sí. No, sabes que no, en, en Nashville no, no he conocido a nadie todavía. Mm. Simon Cutcher was saying, oh, so true, Nicolás. When Kim did a stream drawing the manga characters of Katsuya uh, Terada, the Monkey King, he was so excited and fun boying his energy was so infectious. Yeah. And all artists are like that. We're, yeah, we're all, we all have our heroes in our heads. Like, that's unavoidable. Christian Yak Martinez was saying, How often do you draw without reference? And what do you think was Master Gi's, uh, Kim Jung Gi's legacy? Also, how do you think we could reach such an incredible level before the AI generates graphics like this? Um. So what is what is? Uh, oh, how much how much do I draw from imagination? Yeah. So very, very... do you want me to section the questions for you? Yeah. So how much do I draw from imagination? Mm -hmm. Um, not so much. I used to draw for my work when I used to, you know, work on, on like, um, illustration a lot more, but now I'm more of, um, an observer. So I, I was trained from observation from nature. So I think that that doesn't hinder you, but it does make you understand a, a, a observation a little bit different. Um, mm -hmm. it's not so much about, Educating yourself, you know, for uh, w when you're trying to to draw from imagination or construct anything from imagination, you're you're almost it's it's almost like a constant education of you know your understanding, like constantly, constantly just 
feeding more and more data into your understanding and um uh, and that's pretty amazing but i think there's a difference there's a different sort of um um like you know something different happens in your brain when you are working from observation where you're just yes you're attend attempting to understand nature but you also feel that it's so specific what you're painting that it's almost very hard if not impossible to generate like overarching rules about how to paint x y or z mm -hmm. so you know if you want like simple examples of that um if you if you look at uh, the series of Monet's uh, cathedrals that he painted, the ones that he painted of, um, I think it's Notre Dame. Um, but if you look at those, because they're painted on different um, seasons and, and throughout the years, they all feel like so different, like such different paintings. Like, sure, there are certain shapes that repeat themselves. So I'm sure he had like a sense of what, you know, his subject matter look like mm -hmm. but they were so dependent on what the lighting condition was of those specific moments of the year that they all feel like you know incredibly different and highly specific paintings so i think that that's kind of how you behave as a painter when you when you're trained uh from life you realize i've learned how to do things and i learned that some things repeat but i have to look it's almost like you have to more look you have to look more I'm sorry at your subject matter than you have to go into your brain and remember the things that you think you have learned. You have to just be super super observant. Mm -hmm. Um and um so that was the first one. Yeah, no, and I was also going to add to that uh that you were working for the section in your channel, the visual correspondence. Yeah. You did a couple from your imagination. Yes. So maybe if Christian wants to uh, look for those, it's a series called uh, Visual Correspondence, where we were kind of sending each other or like showing each other uh, work that we did. And then the other person would answer back with another thing. So like a painting, sculpture, drawing. So, yeah, you did a couple. I think you did three from your imagination, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, it's not my usual way of working. Mm -hmm. It's not my usual way of working. So the second question was, yeah. what do you think was Master uh, Kim jong gis legacy? Oh, just, you know, the love of... Uh, well, the I, I think I, um, when I was, you know, struggling myself to understand, like, his reach, um, just understanding how universal imagination can be like this unbound and and what i think i called like unhinged at times imagination um of his what it can become as a sort of visual language it, it can just it can really be um like a a bridge between cultures and beliefs and it's it's really quite remarkable so uh that just the, the you know that speaks about the universality of of imagination of like this creativity this this sort of unlimited um apparently unlimited creativity but the other was like um and i think we spoke about this the first time we we were talking about him just a an absolute joy of what you do i mean th there's no way in the world uh, he could have done you know, 10% of the things that he did if he wasn't, like, fully enjoying what mm -hmm. he was doing. If he, you know, didn't feel like this was his, you know, his calling, like this was his purpose to do mm -hmm. these um, these images. So I would say just remind yourself of that, like how valuable, how priceless it is to to just enjoy so deeply what you're doing. Because that's the driving force for everything. That is, that is what's going to make you work a little bit harder. That's when it's. That's what's going to keep you studying a little bit more. Um, that urge to just want to understand a little, a little, you know, more, and and push a little more. Well, however, whatever, however you define pushing, which is very different for all of us. But, but that's the motor. 
that's you know our love our enjoyment um our our want to to keep searching it's it's fueled by uh necessarily fueled by um by just the the degree in which we connect and we care about what we do so and the third part of the question was how do you think we could reach such an incredible level before the ai generates graphics like this oh it's it's okay For, well two parter but tricky question because i don't think we can reach those levels and i know sometimes people frame it as hey you can get there like don't don't ever tell yourself that you can't and it's not that i don't want to be like a i don't want to sound like a person that is not allowing you to push yourself but um but i'm also uh, a realist in many many ways and i also know that you know there's there's I've met tons of incredibly talented people over my years and um and we all have boundaries. We all have like limitations and our lives are shaped by those limitations and it's nothing you know there's nothing scary about that or there's nothing shameful about that. There's there's nothing wrong you know about um being quite aware of those limitations. Um People like Kim Jung-gi are extraordinary because those limitations were not really apparent. And when you meet people like that, where you just don't really know what their limit is, um, you start to realize that they are just insanely special and, and very different from all of us. And I don't know, I, at least, I mean, I, I don't think it speaks about my my um lack of education in terms of of um or or my lack of context for judging how talented people are because like i said i've met and i've seen very very talented people i've met them or i either met them or i've seen their work you know in person and i've been able to compare what that work looks like and feels like when You know, you view it with a wider lens and you start including like, you know, incredibly talented people throughout history. Um, and uh, sometimes there's just people that you can't, you're not going to be able to reach. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what we do. It doesn't matter the hours of study. It's not about that because I don't want to give anyone like this false sense of like, hey, you know why you're not as good as Kim Jong-gi? Because you're not putting enough effort like that's not fair that's really not fair to anyone because i don't care how many hours i would put into something i wouldn't be as good as him period like in in doing what he does like i wouldn't i just wouldn't period there's just no doubt in my brain that things work differently it just doesn't happen that way So I think it's really, it would be very strange to frame it like under this pretext of, hey, don't just idolize these people. Like this is a reminder of work really hard. Like tell yourself, you know, you still have a long way to go and keep working and keep, keep, you know, reaching for that place that you want to get to. Like if that's what get, get, gets you going, fine. But you also have to be, you know, okay in realizing that if you don't reach that place, all you're telling yourself is that you're human and it's okay. And also you're admitting that this other person was extraordinary. Like you have to sometimes grant people the right that they deserve, which is the right to be extraordinary. And especially people that are, you know, out of the ordinary. You have to respect that. This is not about being contented. Like you, you don't have to go, you know, with your head down, walk back home and say, I'm just never going to be as good. You don't have to Eeyore it for your the rest of your life. No, but there is something as there is such a thing as just respect, like, you know, absolute respect. Yeah. And we are no different. I'm sorry, Danny, let me finish no, uh, oh. this little part. And um, but we are no different than painters throughout history. Like there's there's been extraordinary people throughout history, but they do things differently from other people than other people. 
like that's just what they do like um what rembrandt was doing uh soroja couldn't do right what soroja was doing uh fortuni couldn't do so you know what fortuni was doing uh goja couldn't do what goja was doing michelangelo couldn't do right so that's the right that extraordinary people deserve that we acknowledge that they were so big that they were doing things that none of us will ever be able to do. We can learn from them, but we're never going to be as good as that. And in the sense of how much time do we have until AI? No, don't worry. We got time. Don't worry about it. I mean, there's still, there's still this beautiful thing in art that's called like intent, like the will to do something, you know, the will to communicate the, you know, the, the need to communicate, which is, it's just this, you know, beautiful, beautiful fuel that that we all possess. And um, as long as that exists and that I don't see that wavering, you know, the desire to say something through, to tell stories through art, there's always going to be a place for all of us. Like there are for sure going to be things that are redefined. But there's always going to be room for us. That's crazy to think that because there's going to be, we're going to, f we're going to find, um, uh, you know, a program aids, like can aid us in our work because we are going to be aware that that's now another tool for, for us to then believe that there is no place for us. That that's kind of crazy. So no, there's, there's still plenty of time and there's still plenty of room for, I think, creativity to coexist with technology for sure. Uh, yeah. So no, no, I was just going to say that, I mean, regarding what you were saying about not being able to reach Kim jong Gi's level and that being okay, mm -hmm. I think it's not about just saying as you were saying, like, ego or just, like, being super sad about it. No, but it's, like, push... Like, you should always push yourself to be your best version, always. But your ber best version does not not translate the same as Kim jong Gi's best version, and that's fine. Like, there's no point in comparing your journey with someone else, because there's no there's not going to be a point of comparison. And, and what you were saying is true. That's why Kim jong Gi is, was so, so amazing and so, so impactful for the arts because his best version was so superior and that's fine. It doesn't mean that if you know that you're not going to reach Kim jong Gi's level, then you quit drawing. No. You just try to be your best version, whatever that means. Um. Yeah, sometimes I fear that people, when they hear that, they feel that that's like a beauty pageant sort of answer. Like, oh, just be the best. Like, your path is different. Be the best person that you can be. But honestly, that's the truth of life. Like, I really do think like the the... Like one of the secrets of enjoying your life, of being fulfilled in your life, of like noticing all the good things that are happening in your life is when you just celebrate the greatness that comes from other people. But you realize that, that whatever you are putting into this bigger equation of creativity and, and like the human desire to communicate, like whatever your little grain of sand of input is into this, you know, this bigger pot that that we're constantly sort of feeding um that it's valuable that it there mm. it is valuable be because it is it is about your desire yes you're like you have the desire to tell your stories yeah like you are the center yeah and they only belong to you they are they are yes. the stories that belong to you and when you are capable of telling them of like communicating them in in like fantastic ways like w Trust me, you will hold all of us like captive, like a captive audience wanting to hear more about whatever story it is that you have to tell, whatever it is. Yeah. And I think that 
at the beginning, if you like, if you realize for the first time that you're not going to be as talented as Kim Jong Yi, maybe it can feel discouraging. But I would say that, at least in my case, knowing how amazing some other artists are, it's not discouraging, but encouraging because I understand that I don't have to compare myself that it's just my journey and it's only mine and it gives me peace to understand my journey like to understand for example my improvement comparing in, comparing it to what I did before to what, what I wanted to achieve and what I've had achieved and not thinking about someone else's journey because it wouldn't make sense it would never make sense Because Kim Jong-gi's journey was his journey and he was absolutely amazing and he struggled with his struggles. But that was him. That was his journey. And that has nothing to do with my journey or your journey or someone else's journey. It just, it just don't because you're not them. So I think that it, at the beginning, as I was saying, it can sound discouraging, but I think that it's very encouraging. Because you start like understanding yourself and yourself in your own journey. Mm. Let's see. Camille O'Gorman was saying that year is absolutely perfect. And a hard eyed emoji. Thank you, Camille. Steve Weed was saying, I would love to see your work, Danny. Oh, Steve, uh, in the corner up there, in the left upper corner, there's our Instagrams. So there you can see my Instagram. It's the first one, Daniela OCMP. And uh, we were talking about a part of our channel that's called Visual Correspondence, where you can also not only see, but listen to some of the things I did for the visual correspondence we had. It's coming back uh, next year. It's, It's coming, coming back. back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you can see it there. Thank you for your interest. And you can see it in my Instagram. Um, yeah, definitely coming back next year. Alejandro Morales dice, Uy. hola todo el mundo. Hola, Dani Nico. Hola, Alejandro. Qué chévere. Guten <coughs> Nacht. Qué chévere ver a Alejandro. Por acá regularmente de nuevo. Eso no. Regular, regular. Regularmente de nuevo, sí. Y veo regularmente a Alejandro. Eh, Olga María Benninghoff. Was Who is that? Extraordinary. Who is this person? Hola, Olguita. Constantly exaggerating. Um, David was saying, any tips for painting backgrounds? Um, they should be painted in the same way that you would paint anything. It's, um, so I don't know if you're talking like, uh, backgrounds as in, um, specific backgrounds for like animation or, um, uh, illustration or, um, or if you're talking about backgrounds as in that, which is farther back in a picture plane. Um, but regardless of, of the the um you know however you define it or whatever use you have for it it's uh it's painting in in fact it's as the paint it the painting of it well in this case it's just a very specific painting so back whatever is in the back is not going to be you know relevant because it's not relevant for this painting this particular painting but um but whenever you have a figure interacting with space or a figure interacting with atmosphere or just like, you know, objects in space, that, you know, uh, uh, displayed in space and, and you have to traverse that space from front to back. Um, I think that our, usually our problem when dealing with um, any one of those spaces, but particularly with backgrounds, because we have such a thing as people, you know, feeling like it's hard to do backgrounds. Um, I think what happens is that we start to believe that there's like a hierarchy in the picture. Yeah, like to separate things. Yeah, where one, where 
you know, whatever I have in my foreground is what's important. Whatever I have in my background is less important. And it's not really less important. It's actually as relevant to the picture as anything that you're going to put in your foreground. So you, you're you very aware of this when you do like traditional painting because a background is no different than anything that you're painting in front because in your paint layer, your paint is going to be like whatever your background is, is going to be right next to whatever you're painting, hoping, to, you know, hoping to come forward. So when you suddenly realize that all of it is important, then you understand that it's just painting. All of it is painting. So there's no reason to try to, I mean, you can understand it as, um, as having a different character because each painting should have like uh, its own set of rules and it should be solved in a very particular way. So maybe in some paintings, the, the background has to play like a specific role and it's important for you to recognize that role. But in, in, sense, in the sense of, of how it should be painted, it should be painted exactly the same way as you paint every other bit of your painting, exactly the same way. And in fact, it has to have like a, uh, uh, not only an effect, but a direct influence on how you see or on how you perceive the things that are in front. Like it has to have a level of, um, I know affectation is not the word, but it, it has to affect the um, impact. Yeah. Impact, whatever is in front of it. It has to. Mm. Um, Carla Anglada was saying, yes, beautifully said, Danny. Uh, Christian Jake Martinez was saying, thank you so much, priceless, priceless words. Alejandro Morales was saying, estaba diciendo, Danny, me levanté a saludarlos, en unos minutos vuelvo a la cama, un abrazo. <laughs> bueno, bueno, pero, pero cumplió la tarea Alejandro de venir y saludar. Entonces, chévere, así sea por un ratito. Mientras se vuelve a dormir. Eh, ahí de pronto se va arrullando Alejandro. No, pues. Con nuestra conversación. Mm. Um, Steve Weed was saying, Nicolás, do you think you were more talented than most or just worked harder than most? Oh, no. So this is like, I was part of a class that had just, you know, way too talented people. And part of a class, I always mean like, um, The people that were above me, let's say, like uh, Dice Tsutsumi, for example, uh, and people that were, you know, below me in terms of our age, like uh, James Jean. So I think I consider myself so not naturally talented. Like they were so talented. Um, I've often said it, but Isao was just absurdly and naturally talented. Um, Tomer Hanaka was naturally talented. James was naturally talented. Um, for most of us, we had to work. <laughs> we had to work really hard. But that doesn't mean that neither Tomer nor Isao nor James work. You know, they didn't work because they relied on their ability. Like, no, they actually were geniuses because they had this just natural kind of given talent you know this little star um above them but they coupled that with like a ridiculous work ethic so um yeah they they earned it all like they earned that entirely that ability that you know that the the priceless treasure that is you know getting this tool that you're able to communicate with like they really earned it They really, really earned it. Mm, Steve Weed was saying, you guys are so great. Yeah, be the best you can be. We don't hear that enough. Julia Tovar. I don't know who that is. Is saying, hello, hello. Muy emocionada de ver esta pintura avanzar. Salió todo el ilustrador que hay en Nico con el tigrecito de atrás. <laughs> sí. Ese es Nicolás. Nicolachito. No supe cómo hacer un tigre calvo, entonces pues ahí quedó como... No, pero los signos de exclamación parecen los tres pelitos. Ah, puede ser, puede ser. Entonces, sí. 
Carla Anglada was saying, yes, Kim Jong-gi was unique, crazy talent, an amazing spirit. And also Giacometti's marks are incredible in a different way as are Nicolas. Mm. Let's see. <laughs> Victor de la Cruz was sending crying laughing emojis. He dice, de la vega. <laughs> so... Maybe they... Uh, I don't know if they know the Jane the Virgin um, character. Maybe. It would be cool if they did. Oh, God. <laughs> um, Sam and Kutcher, when you were talking about uh, you having a pinkish undertone and me having like a yellow undertone, yeah. Sam was saying, I've noticed that I'm yellower from other people too, Danny. And a crime, crying emoji. Oh, but Saman, that doesn't mean anything. No, what? It's a color. It's just, it's yeah. a color. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's not good or bad. It just at is. At all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Parting Mist was yeah. saying, It's funny how the chroma and value have a bigger impact on if it reads as skin when compared to hue. Or I should say the relationship of value. Like you said, the light is such a huge impact. Pink, neon light, and the hue of the skin will be straight up pink. Yeah. Uh, you hit it there. Painting it from life with trial and error is the most straightforward way. It's hard to paint people from life, though. It can be awkward. Only chance I really get is the mirror. Well, that's as good a chance as any. Yeah. Mm. Uh, let's see. I'm just cleaning up my um, my edge here just a little bit. I'm also trying to figure out what I want to do with that little, you know, with that color or the value that's going to be surrounding it. I I said I I was going to put like a zipper, like a big. Like an oversi oversized, like, little zipper there. Mm -hmm. Oh, no. Not anymore. It looked terrible. Well, or I couldn't make it work. Let's say. No, but it's good like to, that. to like, be open to changing things. Yeah. As you go. Uh, Rody, so Victor mm -hmm. de la Cruz, was saying, what would you say would be your best subject slash object phases or animals? Um, I don't, I mean, I favor painting people for sure. Um, but I'd like to believe that I'm excited about painting anything really. Mm -hmm. Um, so I don't know. I don't know. Like if, if you were to tell me right now that I can't paint people anymore and that I just have to paint objects. I think I would still enjoy very much so painting. Like, mm. I would really be happy painting for the rest of my life. Um, if you tell me that I have to paint buildings, like, uh, I would have a slight depression first because I think I, I'm terrible at it. But then I would be like, it's painting. Like, what I love is painting. I just don't, I don't love to paint things. I just love to paint. So, um, So yeah, I, I think it's you you may have like a natural inclination towards certain things, but uh but when you love to paint, in my case, I think I can, you know, rightfully say that this is something that I absolutely adore doing. Um then it kind of doesn't matter what you have to paint. Like it's okay. It'll never feel like um Like somebody is is uh, is um, taking away something from me. Felipe Neves was saying, "Hola, Nicolás y Daniela. Eh, hola, Felipe. Mm, I was trying to say something in Portuguese, but yeah, boa tarde. Is it boa tarde? 
Or bom dia, because I don't know. Bom dia, no. Mm, Por que não? É tarde. <laughs> eh, Gabriel Pozo dice, disculpen si es un poco atrevido esto no, y no tienen que responder. Tranquilo, Gabriel, mándese. Pero qué talla, mentira. Oish. Disculpen si es un poco atrevido y, es, y no tienen que responder, pero han pensado en el precio para esta pieza. No se preocupen, yo espero a que posteen en OPL. No, no sé, Gabriel. La verdad, no sé. No sé. Pero todavía gracias incluso... por el interés. Sí, todavía. Incluso no, no tengo súper claro qué quiero hacer con ella, si le soy sincero. Por ejemplo, la, la pieza de Fer que era de con las, los girasoles, pues la pusimos a un precio alto para, para... La verdad, yo tenía la esperanza de que se quedara con nosotros más tiempo. Me gustaba mucho esa pieza y me gustaba verla muchísimo. Y se vendió. O sea, sí, esa, que... esa es la verdad. Entonces, eh, no sé, de pronto esta también, como porque se quede con nosotros un ratito más, podemos ponerle un precio más alto para que yo tenga mi, mi momento también de compartir con ella eh, y esté como, como contento con, con esa conversación que puedo tener eh, temporalmente o por siempre. O sea, de pronto nadie nunca la quiere y eso también pues está bien eh, pero no, por ahora no no como que no he decidido si le soy súper sincero Julia Tovar was saying oh, yesterday I thought of a would you rather ok, let's hear it I mean... so, would you rather be a predator or... snake, tiger, lion, eagle or a prey Bunny, mouse, deer, cow. Mm. Am I going to feel guilt, Julia? Why would you feel guilt? Because, I mean, it's like the conversation we had about uh, like a duck or a, like a geese coming to attack me or a chicken that I would be like crying if I, like you were saying, if it was like life or death situation yeah but it is and you know death for a predator yeah yeah, yeah i like know that species relies entirely upon you yeah but i'm prey. gonna say am i gonna feel as bad like am i gonna have the brain of a human oh. in a predator so i'm am i gonna be feeling guilty if i have to hurt the prey you you know what i'm trying to say because i know that I yeah, mean, I think that a terrible animal. That's, a predator. I think you're prey. Does not, no, just your prey. Does like, not feel guilty, but if if you I tell me so. you have to be a predator but have your own brain, so you're gonna feel as guilty. Oof. Julia was saying, keep in mind that the prey have abundance of food everywhere, all the grass you want, and predators have to work a little bit more for it. And Julia was saying, I would say no guilt. No. Also a predator. Yeah, me too. Just for the peace of mind, I would say. Like I would be a crocodile. We, I don't know if a crocodile. Oh, but it would be cool to yeah, be like in the water and the... Crocodile, yeah. Or like a shark. You know, they've been here forever. Um, yeah, because I'm fine with working a bit harder. But knowing that... I'm I don't want I don't need to be aware yeah. of someone hunting me. Right. Down. It's not like so. you're gonna go to the water hole and you're always gonna be like, I'm about to die. Yeah, and it's like, oh I have grass here. Yeah. And then you don't because you no longer exist. It's like kids, where where's Tommy? Where's Tommy? Oh, that was terrible. Tommy's gone. So yeah, predator. Tommy is gone. Predator, I would say. Yeah. Me Alejandro too. Morales was saying, I would rather be an orca. That's a big ass predator. Mm. Yeah. Although they're hunt by uh, great whites also. So uh, they're hunt by sharks, which is remarkable. Julia was saying, yes, living in fear would suck. I know. Yeah. Yes. That's why I was saying, because if you would add there the guild component, I don't know if I could be a predator. But if it's like guilt free, oh, a predator, yeah, 100%. I don't think they feel like the strongest predator ever. 
Uh, so I'm not a prey. I'm just having a feast. I don't know. Now you're having like a power trip. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Julia was saying, I like snake, which is my Chinese animal. Okay. I think I'm, what am I, dog, I, horse? I, have I forget now. Dog? Yeah, I, I'm one of those. I forget. Mm, let's see. It's based on your birth, like your year. Mm. Am I a pig? Let me see. Maybe I'm pig. No, I'm horse. Mom, I think I'm horse. You are a snake. Snake. Me? Yeah. Your year is snake. My year. I don't feel represented by pig. a snake. I'm a pig. Yes, for I'm sure. Pig. I mean, you're 100% represented there, but. Oh, and I love the. The like, it, like I googled that, and it's like a smiling pig. I like it. Yes. So I'm like Julia. Yeah. Oh no. <laughs> I want to change teams. Uh. Camille Ogerman. Yeah. Who's saying I'd love to be the predator, but I just know I'm a prey. <laughs> I think that would be me. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Salmon Kutcher was saying, what was the year of 1997, Danny? So let me Google. So. Okay, Danny now became like a uh, Googling. 1997. So, Salmon, you would be an ox. Mm, yep, yeah, stubborn as an ox. <laughs> mm. Is that just by year? I think so. Yeah. Eh. Uh, yeah. Just a year. Okay. And it says the cycle repeats every 12 years. Oh, okay. So you there's rat, ox, tiger, rabbit, Dragon, snake, horse, sheep, monkey, rooster, dog, and pig. Mm. Let's see. I want to see if someone else answered to that. Salmon Cutcher said, no, in a crying emoji. You don't want to be an ox? Salmon? Um... And Salmon was saying, I say eagle, I would love to fly. Is a snow leopard on the table? They are cool and don't get seen a lot. Okay, now you're just wishing for animals. <laughs> eh, Julia dice, ooh, fellow snake. No. Y Artu es pig. No. O sea, mm -mm. también es la pareja de la, mm -mm. la serpiente y el marrano. Igual que acá. Mm -mm. Liad was saying, be a house cat. They own the world. <laughs> they own your world, Liad. Um, and hi, Liad. Hi, Liad. Yeah. Um, Pankernik was saying, there's a slight difference. It changes in January. Julia was saying, the month and the day you were born also have an animal, I think. Mm, y Julia dice, jaja, ahora se Nico. <laughs> <laughs> Muy bien, Julia, que se revele. No, pues sí. Gil Robles was saying, I was born in the year of the rabbit, Bugs Bunny, and a wink emoji. Camille was saying, I'm a dog in the Chinese thing. Knew it. Alejandro Morales was saying, hit the like button, people. <laughs> uh, ay, Alejandro is so nice. That's very nice. It's not doing anything for us. Hit though, the subscribe. Yeah, that that would be super cool. That one uh, does a little bit more. Mm, Pankarnik was saying, so if you were born in January and May of the same year, you're different animals. Uh, Salmon was saying, I wanted to be a bunny or a tiger and a crying emoji. Um, so let's see, because I want to see if people were 
answering to the Julia's would you rather mm. no <laughs> no 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 because I already read the answers for that I know because Camila was answering Alejandro Fail was answering like no I think Julia. it was a, nah, he, thank you for nothing no Julia that was good and I love that mm -mm. you uh, Have the brought worst. the uh, would, would you, you rather this? back yeah. no well back to back to and from the dead Mm, let's see. Mm. Marcelo Enrique da Silva was saying Brazil assi Brasil. assistindo. Boa tarde. Boa tarde. Boa tarde, Marcelo. Um, Sebastián Briseño dice: Hola, Nicolás, ¿cómo estás? Sebastián. Mm. Steve Weed was saying, you said you struggled with urban scapes. Yes. Me too. Can you talk about that? Oh, I'm overwhelmed by them. That and I think my uh, fear and um, loathing of perspective. Because it's ignorance based on absolute ignorance. Fueled by ignorance. Leah dice, haha, ahora se again, Nico. <laughs> um, Leah was saying, I would rather be prey than predator. Yeah. I mean, and you could be a, not vegan, but like a herbivore. How do you say that? Herbivore. Herbivore. Prey. So, yeah. Um, Simon Kutcher was like, was like, was saying. <laughs> Simon Kutcher was like talking Salmon. to me all recess. Simon, not Simon. Simon. Salmon. And he was like, no, 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 because they were, because they were saying Fruit Loops. In, no, no, and no. I was like, what? At the end of you can't what? Have my Fruit Loops, oh Simon. God. They were Get saying. They were Simon. like. Because in the, in the thing that they're saying at the end, they said they were like, take it or leave it. So I said, Get your they own were like, loop, salmon. Salmon Kutcher was saying, Why do you have a name of a fish? Talking about the day of birth, the government made me two days younger when I renewed my passport. They nice. were like, take it or leave it. That's how time works, yeah. Um. Uh, Pankernik was saying, I would be a vegan crocodile. So you would die. Yeah. Pankernik. Yeah. You know why those are extinct? Um, Steve Weed was saying, yeah, me too, but yours still rock. Um, let's see. Um... You know, Salmon, uh, what happened to you in your passport? When I went, it's a sad story because, I mean, I'm petite and I know that. But when I went to have my ID, like to, ¿cómo se dice? Tramitar. Well, no, to get my ID. To get my ID, yeah. Uh, they fill the form with all my information and then when I received the um, ID like the printed ID I was shorter than what they were like what they typed there and I remember I was like oh I'm shorter here and they told me oh no you can fix it but you have to pay to renew like to get another um, ID printed so I was like, you know what? Never mind. I am short, so I would. Um, I'll be short forever. Sadly, accept the fate inches you took from me. 
So thank you. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Camila Ogerman was sending a heart emoji. Julia was saying Valley Girl Nico as if. Um, Salmon. Salmon Kutcher was saying it's not the name of the fish, of a fish in a crying emoji. Like Sam Man, not Salmon Nicolas. <laughs> I'm not going with you to the prom, Salmon, as if. Hill Robles was saying, I was thinking about my struggles with perspective earlier today. I thought if I solve the perspective in a small drawing, then size it up, it might be more manageable. Yeah? I hate avoiding it. No, good job, good job. Mm. Steve Wheat was saying, I hope you guys know how much you're influencing people. Like in a good way or... Well, with your salmon, yeah. I don't know. <laughs> Thank you, Steve. Feel. That's so nice. Um, and also, I think that people don't realize, but they influence us a ton, too. I mean, yeah. we were even talking today yeah. about the twin brother of Gabriel. Yeah. Like, you guys permeate our lives so much. So, so much. Like, every single day of our lives. And we had salmon the other day, so thank you, salmon. So salmon, yeah. Yeah, we are eating way more fish, <laughs> so thank you. That's that's something, I guess. Uh, and Steve was saying yes in a great way. No, that's so nice, Steve. Thank you. Liad was saying perspective is easier in digital programs. They have ways of assisting. That is also true. But I wouldn't be opposed to like going through like this boot camp with somebody to teach me like, you know, almost like fundamentals and then, hmm. you know, like 10 weeks of like just hardcore perspective. Yeah. But I you would... would have to measure and measure and measure. Well, you have to, you know, make grids. And... No, no, no. I know it. And, I, and I'm just saying that because I know that you would do it in a heartbeat, like, yes, you would be 100% into it. But I don't know if you could keep it as a constant practice. No, for sure not. Exactly, because in your painting, I mean, you're not the type of person that loves, like, measuring things and... No. Like, grading things and... No, but it would be one of those things that it's like, ugh, I've always, <laughs> like, solved it intuitively. But I, I, I've always known for a fact that, that I have issues with it, like very you know plausible issues with perspective no and i get it i mean i would do it too i mean if i could go to a class when they where they would teach me that that would be amazing because i mean it's knowledge so if you struggle afterwards you would have the tools to if maybe you can't approach it in the way you always do you have the tools to approach it in that way to solve the problem. So knowledge is always useful. I'm going to ask Angela for next year to see Ooh. if there's if she teaches. Either she teaches it or if she has somebody in uh, in warrior camp. Oh, if you do the curse, I'm going to course. You're going to curse me out? I'm going to be lurking in the background. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. As I did with Peggy, I'm going to crawl. <laughs> do the meeting. Style. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Liad was saying there are some great books on perspective too. Yeah, you know who I like, Liad. You're probably really familiar with him because you do um, a storyboarding. Have you seen uh, Dan Milligan's work? Dan Milligan. Um, he's super, super good. I wonder if he's got a book. Could you do a quick, uh, yeah, Dan, like Google slash Milligan. bookstore uh, search book to see if he's got. Mm. See, yes, yeah, so not this Dan Milligan. 
I don't. I can't see Danny. No, no, no. I know there's a joke somewhere in there, but no, I'm just because it says Arduino for kids. Oh no, that's so that's, it's an engineer. So yeah, no, that's not not that one. I mean, that, that's interesting. That's cool. Yeah, but yeah, that's sure, not sure. the book we're looking for. No, not the droids. Uh, I don't see. No, I don't see. In my very limited search, yeah, I don't see no any books. No, okay. Maybe if someone knows that they do have a book, they can let us know. But no, I didn't find any. Mm. Let's see. Maybe let me check here. Uh, that um, the ink book, inked book, it's really good too. I think there's two of those. I think we've talked about this this particular book. Mm. Framed ink. Those are really good. Yeah, but no. I oh, that's a shame. Mateus Mestre, is it? Framed ink. Let's see. Framed. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. He... Marcos Mateus Mateu Mestre. Mateu Mestre? Mateu. Yeah. Okay. Mateu he's... Guioncito Mestre. Yeah, he's very good. Very, very good. That book is amazing. I don't know the second one. I know the first one. Mm. But that, that book I would recommend. I probably have to study that book for a lot more. Yeah, Sam and Culture was saying Framed Ink. I know it was Framed Ink. And a happy face. Yeah, that book is so good. And Liad was saying, Haha, yes, Framed Ink and Framed Perspective. Um, let's see. Oh, Look, because Liet before was saying there are some great sound, great books in perspective, and then they said, "Framed Perspective" by Marcos Mateu Mestre. Oh yeah. So yeah, yeah. that dude is so good. Mm. And Liet was saying, "Perspective for comic book artist: How to achieve a professional look in your artwork," but David by David Chelsea. Oh, I don't know that one. Mm. I love that title, though. Yeah, that's a fun. I mean, it it must it can be like a great book. It's just Pers and it's perspective. Signo exclamación. Perspective. Perspective for comic Excelsior. book artist: How to achieve a professional look in your artwork. Yeah. By David Chelsea. Because a bad perspective means lack of professionalism. Mm. Let's see. Hill Robles was saying, I know that Aaron Blaze has a video on basic perspective on his website. Um, and Sam and Kutcher was saying, Framed Ink was recommended by David Finch, the comic book artist. Finch is so good. Jesus. Mm. That dude is so good. I mean, it's a it's super traditional hero comic booky, but... That dude can draw. Oof. Jean Luanex mm -hmm. was saying, wow, in all caps. By the way, I had to pull out the bismuth. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, so Zorn ba plus bismuth. Yeah. By bismuth. That Zorn I was say. by bismuth. <laughs> yeah, that's like the a fragrance. Smell of fermented, fragrance. you know, Swedish fish. <laughs> yeah. Uh... Let's see. <laughs> fragrance. <laughs> I love your fragrance. <laughs> what did I say at the beginning? Fragrance. No, no, no. Um, that I was reading that in Spanish. Drunk? No, no, no. I was reading in Spanish. Oh. And Gabriel, uh, I think it was Gabriel that used the word oh, in I English. Forget. What is it? What was it? Oh. <laughs> What? Rangue. Rangue. 
Oh, ya, yeah, Gabriel Vicente. ¿Quién dirías? Range. Que tiene el rango. Rang. <risa> ¿Quién tiene el rango? Eh, sí. Ay, mira, Terrible, Gabriel. Mucha hueva yo porque me hubiera encantado como decirte, lindita, ¿qué será rango? A ver, ¿tú qué te pones a decir? No, porque de una me di cuenta después cuando mm. estaba... No, porque él después dijo algo en inglés no, en por la eso. frase. Por eso. Y por eso dije range y me reí. O que te hubieran dejado... No, pero dijiste yo range. No. Pero me hubiera encantado no, dejarte no, no, sola no, 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 por un rato. No, hay que volver a esa parte del video porque yo dije... De una vez dije range y me reí. Porque no sabías qué era. No, porque yo me di porque cuenta que era range. range. Mi amor, no, te dije range. Voy a ir al video en mi celular. Bueno. Pero qué minuto esté bueno no luego miro pero no estoy segura que yo me di cuenta Ajá. Gabriel de pronto nos puede decir Gabriel yo me di cuenta de una cierto que Nicolás dice que él fue el que me dijo que era ahí lo estás condicionando range. un poquito como Gabriel cierto pues tú puedes decir Gabriel yo le dije primero cierto acuérdese Gabriel quién le dijo de una manera muy efusiva tranquilo como quien lo sentó tranquilo Gabriel y le dijo cálmese Gabriel tranquilo si no no hay comida Um, let's see. Um, Steve Witt was saying, you probably don't see it. Not just about painting, but just life. Very cool. Love you guys. And they were saying, I would love to just hang out with you too. And I would be a crazy fan nervous with Nico. What? No. <laughs> Ay, no, Gabriel. Dice que, ush, creo que Tim Nico en esta, disculpa, Dani. Grande, Gabriel, grande bueno, siempre. Bueno, bloquear. Gabriel y yo. Gabriel ahorita, Pozo, bloquear del ahorita canal. Ahorita saco el balón y jugamos fútbol con su hermano. Eh... Sí, ¿no? ¿Qué más digo después de eso? Rangue. Traición. Traición, Gabriel. No, Gabriel, no. No más. Sí, sí, vio de lo que no se más, Nicolás. Vio de la pela que se. se ah, se de salvó. la pela. Let's Ni see. día a día. ¿Ni día qué? Ni día a día. Ya sé. Mm. Ya sé, era un chiste. Ya sé. Silenciar a Nicolás, bloquear a Gabriel. Eh... Carla Anglada was saying. The richness of Kim Jung Gi's face is beautiful. I wish I had a bigger screen. Oh, I know. I know we have to um, limit this a little bit by... Well, the fact that it's a... a um, say live, it limits already the uh, resolution of what you guys are getting. Um, yeah, the fact that we're also trying to show the palette. I mean, my... Puddle fill palette. I mean, it's potholes everywhere. It's terrible. But, um, but yeah, but it's compromises, compromises, I guess. Salmon Kutcher was saying, I only use the basic one to three point perspective from how to draw the Marvel Way book. Oh, I had it's extremely book. simple but effective. Oh, I love that book. Mm, Liad was saying, Nicolas. Liad. Do you have any recommendations for doing a photo shoot for photo reference? Oh, nice. Um, do you have a model that you're working with that you're excited to work with, or do you, or do you, did you plan this because you have an image that you want to work on? So, you know, you could hire a model, and then things are a little more open um, because you can. You know, you can start posing the model as you want, um, change lighting, change um, your like set or just the, the place where they are uh, sitting, standing, lying down, um, indoors, outdoors. Um, it really, you know, it's far more flexible if you're just going to work with somebody, but it's always better to have an idea of what you want and not just like you know, wait till they come inside and, you know, inside or if, if you're going to shoot it in your home slash studio or if you go to your location, whatever it is that you've chosen and you say, okay, let's pose and let's see what we do. Uh, um, if they're good models, they're not going to care in the best of ways. Like they're going to be okay with whatever you ask, you know, them, well, whatever in terms of like what's professionally acceptable, of course. 
Um, but whatever you ask them to do, um, they're going to be fine. They're professionals. Like they, they, they're going to work. Um, but I find it always better if you have an idea of something that you want to do and it's not, um, just, uh, it's not a lot of like, okay, let's, let's see, let's see what we can do. Like, let's start shooting photos and let's see where it takes us. Um, yeah, that would be my only recommendation. Like have something planned because if not, you're still going to hire, you know, somebody for a couple of hours, like an hour or two hours, which means like hundreds of photos potentially. Um, so, you know, it's, it's going to feel pretty aimless if you very quickly just don't know what to do with your model. So, um, hopefully you just have something in mind, you know, if it's like, um, images that you want to do of like interior shots. Um, and maybe the model is like lying somewhere and, you know, if you spatially have something sort of worked out, that's, I feel that that's always better than just, um, than just saying, okay, let's wing it. Let's just pull out the camera and let's start, like start snapping photos. So yeah, try to have like a plan. Even like with the illumination. Yeah. Like with the setup of the lighting. Have everything like set up before so you don't waste time and you just get to work. Mm. They're going to, you know, and they're going to be grateful for, for that, for you, you know, not wasting time. Mm. And also you're going to be like efficient about it. So. Mm. I'm super boring professional with those things. But I think it's the best way. So Liad was saying, I have two friends that volunteered and they are open to a lot and customs and so on. Oh, awesome. Do you sketch it out or collect reference images for the photo shoot? Thank you. That was helpful. Um, no, I would have like, if you have costumes already, I would have an idea of what I want with like, um, if it's like, a, um, uh, if you want something just, you know, to feel theatrical if, or if you want something to feel like a date sort of piece, like a historical piece. Um, I would, or if you want something super abstract and you just want like shapes, I would have all those things kind of figured out before. Like I would be very, sometimes when it's friends, for example, they, they don't know what they, like they don't know what you want. So it's always best for you to be, um, to play the role of director, like assuredly, like you could be kind about it, but you have to be like assured. So you can say, we're going to use this and this, and we're, then we're going to, you know, try these out and then we're going to do these and you sit over here, try something else uh, different with your hands. Don't be afraid to speak up by the way. Don't ever be afraid to speak up. Like if you don't like a pose, you don't have to be mean about it, but you can say, no, 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 that doesn't look good. Don't take, I mean, you can take, Again, th potentially thousands of photos if you wanted to, but the point is not to have, you know, thousands of bad photos. Like take photos that can be good for you, like that can help, that can be helpful, but they're only going to be helpful if you speak up and if you search for the things that you want. So don't just take, almost like take the photos as if you were shooting film. And every time you shoot, you know, it's going to cost you money. If you think about it that way, you're going to think, almost like, you know, measure twice, cut once, mm -hmm. you're going to think about the photos that you're taking and you're not just going to shoot like nilly willy, like hoping that there's a good image somewhere there. Mm. Yeah, but have a plan. Um, don't be afraid to, to have a voice, you know, when directing for even friends, like they don't know what, they don't know what you want. Maybe they said yes, just because you want to hang out and they're like, Hey, you said pizza, dude. Well, or vegan pizza, maybe. Uh, but you said food, so we're here for food and beer, and um, sure, we're going to be nice, but you you have to tell us what to do. Yeah, it's even e easier for them. It's a if lot If you say, stay here, make this face, just like move yeah. a little bit to the right, to the left. Yeah. And not like, I don't know, like... For the fair, fair I always um, think of think of something, uh, I, always, I always go like, think of uh, puppies suffering. No, sad does, puppies. Sad puppies. Puppy suffering. 
No, not suffering. That sounds well, terrible. I know, but we got to dig in deep. Fed has to find that place where she can give me but a now bit she, of like angst. Now she has it. Now, yeah, now she's naturally dramatic. So maybe she's just picturing like now she, I created this uh, fixation on like suffering pop puppies like everywhere. No, no, Nicolas. I mean, she's going to she's going to have enough time to get her own therapist when she's older. Mm, so uh Steve Wheat was saying and no disrespect, but you rock Danny. Oh, thank you. No, that's not disrespect. I mean, if you said no disrespect, but you suck, Danny, I would be like, okay, Steve, goodbye. Yeah. But no, thank, thank you, you thank you. Thank you, Steve. Goodbye, Steve. No, 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 thank you. I think it's not disrespect at all. Oh, God, look at look at you filling up that ego. Now you Oof. want Steve to tell you that you rock. No, no, no. you're feeling no, out, fine. No, out of I'm the fine. compliment. So. I'm fine. Gonzalo is team me, so maybe we could play, you know, you and Steve. And well, the, uh... it's Gabriel, so now he's God. team me because <laughs> there's no Gonzalo. <laughs> I fuck. No, I was speaking of another Gonzalo. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. The the triplet. No, no, no. He's, of Gabriel, he's... Julian, and Gonzalo. No, we're going to meet now. him. We're going to meet him in the park. Oh, okay, okay. He yeah. has the ball. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. So you're going to play just with Gonzalo. And I'm going to be playing with Steve and Gabriel and Julian. So. Okay, blocked. Everyone blocked. <laughs> Gabriel was saying, I'm about to jump teams here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Nicolás. Sorry, Gustavo. Um, Simon Kutcher was saying, the no disrespect, but you suck is always a gut punch. Well, of course, because it's like, yeah, no. No, it's because it's that? just <laughs> disrespect. I mean, it's like, why would you say someone you suck? Well, because they suck. Well, don't say it. Just walk away. You don't have to. You suck. No. You can say it as you walk away. Mm. Let's see. Liad was saying, so play emo music. Got it. I mean, if it helps you to set the scene, like, it's, yeah, it's even if it sounds me. funny, even if it's a joke, maybe it could be something that works. Yeah. And by the way, like, I'm 100% not joking on this. Like, people, when they pose, they usually have, like, uh, they, they, sometimes they feel like they're, they look ridiculous or they look kind of weird. Yeah, because they're being vul vulnerable. They're, like, right. self-aware that you are watching them right and, and you're like examining them you're examining yeah. every single thing about the pose so you know even if i was posing i'd be like oh my god is my gut sticking out it's like my you know third chin showing in this picture like what what is what are they looking so closely for so i i totally get that but it starts to become like nervously kind of funny for some people so when that happens like samu there's no way like he's he can be serious when he's uh, posing. Hmm. He is terrible. He just starts like joking and taking it like he gets nervous. So he starts like smiling immediately, almost yeah. like immediately. Even I mean, when you say Samu, stay still. I love that pose. It's like, you know, he's going to move. Oh, 100 percent. Because he gets so nervous that he laughs and then he just like loses the pose. Yeah. So and I would also say, Leah, that that is prone to happen if the if it's friends so i think that at the beginning maybe you like people have to get in their like mood to feel like comfortable with themselves and like having pictures taking of them to get them drunk no 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 just like is that what you're suggesting taking, no no no. i'm just trying to say that maybe the first shots are not going to be the best shots because people can be like like posing and trying to keep the pose but then they would start laughing but i think that while time passes and you take more pictures they get used to it and they like start being more serious yeah so um uh, liad was saying some people need to be informed that they suck <laughs> <laughs> um steve weed was saying may i ask nicolas who are your favorite painters Oh, 
We have a we we should make a like a list, Danny. Yeah. Like a readily available list. So Rembrandt, Nicolas would yeah. say Rembrandt. Yeah. So if I have to pick five from So just yesteryear, five dead, I would say like five a hundred years. No, how do I say this? Yeah, like five Art old history. masters. Old yeah. masters, let's say. You uh -huh. know, that, that sort of means something, I guess. Yeah. I would have to say um, I love Rembrandt. I yeah. love Goya. Love mm -hmm. Mariano Fortuny. I Fortuny. love Fortuny. Mm -hmm. Love uh, Edwin Dickinson. Absolutely mm -hmm. adore Edwin Dickinson. Um, let me see. Of my go-tos. I love, I adore. She's probably one of the most important artists in my life, Olga Oznanska. Mm -hmm. I adore her. Yeah, now you said five. Yeah, so let's stop there for five because uh, that gives you a sense. And five you. contemporary artists. Five contemporaries. Um, I would say, I always say Ruprecht, Ruprecht mm -hmm. von Kaufmann. Yeah. I think he's a genius. I think he's like my, you know, my hero mm -hmm. in many, 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 many ways. Mm -hmm. Um... Let me see, because now, now I'm feeling the nerve of, like, nervous because I could leave somebody out that I really, really like, uh, which I'm probably going to do. Um, I would say my favorite comic book artist, well, it was probably like a tie. It was um, John Paul Leon and, or Mignola, Mike Mignola. So I adore Mike Mignola also. Um, so then in comic books... In illustration, because I'm trying to do one painting, one comic book, one illustration. Somebody in illustration that I really, really like. Um, oh, geez. I mean, Phil Hale counts as all of them, I guess. I still love, I still adore Phil Hale. Would you add Antonio Lopez? Yeah. Yeah, I or mean, not. I well, the thing is, I always think of him as an old master. I always think of him as like. No, I know. I mean, he feels yeah bigger than yeah. But Lopez is like overwhelming to me. He like I never see him as even though he is approachable in some way. Like I always see him as somebody who's just bigger than life. So I I have a hard time just visualizing him as somebody who I, I don't know. Um, because I would have, for example. I would add Antonio Lopez in yeah. my list, and yeah. I would have add Soroya. Okay, to the uh, in past. my other list. Yeah, yeah, Soroya. I mean. No, but you said five. I know, I know, but I could Let, have said five hundred. No, no, uh, Soroya is mine. <laughs> um. Don't touch him. Yeah. Do 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 do. Mm, who else? Um, Fernando yeah. Rosas as a sculptor. Yeah, hundred percent. So I'm trying to like diversify a little bit here. Oh, you know, we were talking the last time about also saying different artists. Yeah. And there Who do you is want to go for? no, no, no. Oh. I was I wanted to say that there is a wood sculptress who yeah. is very cool. Nice term. Laura Eckert. I don't know if I'm familiar very... with her. Oh, come on. I don't know. Am I? So, I think she's oh, no. No, I don't no, no, she's very cool. Oh, it's really good. Yeah, she's very cool. So I think that oh. I wanted to. That's like Bruno Walpot meets like um, nature. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because she meets, meets Mount Rushmore. She does like ensembles. Yeah, that's very wood. nice. It's so beautiful. So, so beautiful. Yeah, very nice. So, you just uh, remember me. Because I, I was trying to, like, activate my brain and not brain, go activate. to the... Yeah, like, trying to escape from the, like, the usual answers yeah. that we give. Yeah. Oh, so, she's very good. You no, got to send me... She's very cool. Yeah. I think I've shown you. I don't think so. Pinterest. Yeah, I, I'm sure. No, this this these type of works, I don't think so, Danny. Mm -hmm. I would have remembered them. I have a good good brain for that. And I mean like not for many for things, example. but No, but I'd never seen that sort of cascading. She does that little cascade to the side. Yeah, she, I don't think I ever saw that. Look, she ensembles. Ensembles? Ensembles. ensembles, yeah. Oh, that's very no, I had it's never seen so that. So cool. Danny. No, never. 
and That's she amazing. lives like the perfect life. Um, I don't know how to say that in English. Like the crust, the of bark the, of the the wood. bark of the wood exactly. Yeah. But it's not like she leaves it just because, but it feels yeah, no, it's, also it's like amazing. a decision. It's, no, it's it's incredible. It's beautiful, yeah. Yeah, absolutely amazing. Mm, yeah, gorgeous. Liet was saying, what about line decker, fraseta, oh, and sergeant? Yeah, come on. You know that those are incredible. Line deckers. I've often said that I think the most, the purest, most distilled style, I think in all of illustration, in all of it, because I can't think of anyone else. I think the the purest is is line decker. You know, it is it is so clean. Like the execution is so flawless and so clean. I mean, talk about every single mark counting, every single one. And you could probably say the same thing about you know Cornwell and Rockwell and Wyeth and Salt Tepper and Meet Schaefer. Um, but you know, and all of those like you know fantastic illustrators, but. There is something about Line Decker that it's like, Jesus Christ, it's like, how did you get how did you get here? Like how in the world did you get to this like manner of working? It's it's beyond understanding. I've seen, I've been lucky. I don't know. I'm trying to remember where I saw these pieces. Or maybe at the illustration house. No, it wasn't at the illustration house. It was probably at the Society of Illustrators. But I saw a couple of line decker pieces that were the sketches for the large pieces. For the finished paintings, let's say they were they weren't really large. Well, they were larger, I guess. Um I think if I was a, a billionaire or like a millionaire even, who cares? <laughs> like I would spend like in my mind, one of my half twos would be getting a, a line decker sketch. One of those painted sketches, like prep sketches for 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 his covers. Mm-hmm. Oh my God, there are beautiful things in this world and those paintings. Like, I've rarely seen something as beautiful, but those are probably like, you know, you know, hundreds of thousands of dollars, I'm sure. So, and very much worth it. Mm, if you were a millionaire, I would like to, to play that game. Okay. What do you so, mean, if... I would love if people also answer to that. Okay. Like, if you were a millionaire, And if you're a millionaire, just answer. <laughs> yeah, just say yes. Yeah. I am, so what? No, no, no. Just answer. <laughs> you don't have to like make believe like us, but just just answer nonchalantly. What uh uh like grandmaster, like old master piece would you buy and what contemporary art? Does it have to be piece? commercially available? No, of course. I don't know. Or do you could you like throw money at some museum's face and they have to just you know sell it to you no i think whatever because i mean i don't know what's available yeah you're right you're right outside like there's pieces that i know from old masters in museums but because i went to the museum yeah. or because because of the museum i've been able to see reproductions of it so i would say yes also like pieces in museums and before you answer yeah vicky victor mosquera dice Yo, Nico, está super cool este. Gracias, y un corazoncito. Este, gracias, ¿no? Vicky ya, como está de jurado de un concurso de FIFA Ay, increíble. Ay, lo máximo. Sí. O sea, Vicky está en el mundial. Sí, ya. Qué chévere. Vicky, cuando viene a Colombia? Y él es la cuota latina, pero uh -huh. parece árabe. Entonces, de una vez chulea como dos hemisferios. <risa> um, so, what's your answer? Um, What do you think? I mean, of course, but because I said in some I said weird that time way, you're asking what is your favorite painting? No. But then you have to think like are we being realistic about it? Because if I say I like The Raft of the Medusa, yeah, right. you don't have words. And there's like yes, but that's like you know, 1.5 billion dollars. No, but I think say. we I think we had a conversation similar to this and I said Mariano Fortuny's kid yeah laying in, no, laying it, in the grass right that one i think if you have a you know if you have a million to spare you can buy that but that's what i was saying like there's other paintings that you know even if you're a millionaire you're not going to be able to buy hmm. it's just beyond your your pay hmm. like what you could pay 
So I'm trying to think of something that that would be purchasable in some degree, I think. I'm speculating. Because I think it's also, the, it's but... complicated if you think of one specific painting. Yeah. So maybe you can't get that painting you saw at the museum, but you can get something else from oh, no, that I, artist. No, so... I'm sorry. I want that painting. So, mm. yeah, but if you want the Raft of the Medusa. Yeah, but the thing I mean, is, you would have to. Yeah, there's not a lot of like other Jericho's. So let's say just something contemporary. Okay. Like what, if you have to buy sense? a sculpture. Oh, a Nicola Samori. I okay. Think. Yeah. And if you have to buy a painting. So painting and a sculpture. Oh, I've often, you know, I, I thought about this, which mm. is a weird and I don't, you know, I'm going to go with what I've always thought. So, um, so I'm not going to change this little dream that I've had because I've always liked how they would look together. So, and this is, I'm sorry, Leah, this is like, you know, probably not, not great for you. And so I'm saying this respectfully. Um, so Nicola Samori for a painting, for sure. I would just love to own one of these paintings mm -hmm. uh, or like, you know, whatever they're called. I don't even know if he calls them paintings. Um, but one of his pieces for sure. And Mark Quinn has like these in the grand tradition. Let's put, let's be contextual about this, please. In the grand tradition of like beef carcasses, mm -hmm. you know, in the grand tradition of like, um, uh, Rembrandt and uh, Chaim Soutine. Oh, I know the one and, you're talking. Uh, Love is Corin. The blood. Uh... Well, the blood self-portrait is is uh, uh, is Mark Quinn. No, no, no. But I thought that you were gonna say that one. That that one. No, no, no. And he I was like, oh, that's has... complicated because if they cut no, the light, he has like these bronzes of like carcasses of like ox carcasses or something like that. Uh -huh. of, like that. Don't ask me why. Like this is. But I think they are, and this is not, I don't know, just as a sculptural piece, I think they are tremendous. I think they're tremendous. They I think are, I've never. Yeah, they're kind of like black, these like black all bronzes. Oh, these ones? Yeah, something like that. Like they look like, a, they almost look like a living Francis Bacon painting. Mm. Oh, it's cool. I adore them. I, I really do. They, for me, there's, I mean, it comes from nature, but it's not, I don't know. I, I don't think it's in, in um I don't I don't think it's glorifying like violence against animals or anything like that. I think it's very primordial in many ways. I think it feels very like it, it feels like a very ancient piece. Um Do you know the size of it? They're life size. I think they are oh. actually casted. Mm. They're they're life size they're castings. So I think that I don't know why I ever since I saw them in like a magazine, I was like, oh, this is it. This is it for me. If not, if that one's a little too gruesome, uh, Daniel Ira, mm -hmm. I would go for a sculpture because now I was thinking, OK, but what do I like that's kind of like in the same, you know, in the same line of these uh, uh, Mark uh, Quinn sculptures? So it would either have to be something of Beth Kavanagh or Stickner. Mm. or Nicola Hicks. I think they both are, like, both of them, they're incredible. So I don't know the painting, but do you know what I think would be a beautiful pairing with the Fernando Rosas that we have? Um, like a Ron Muick, maybe? Yeah, the R Ron Muick, uh old lady sleeping. Yeah. Uh, that's very nice. Oh, Nicolas, My favorite too. is the dad. Oh, it's, yeah. The dad's the portrait of his dad. But look at this. His... I mean, think of this. Oh, that's tremendous. That's that's I don't know why I'm because so I'm not drawn talking to... about like the. Yeah, not the, the huge bigger one. than size. No, no, no. That one's bigger enormous. than live woman sleeping. But no, 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 that's the enormous. tiny one. Yeah. Uh, no, that is gorgeous. I think it would be a beautiful pairing, yeah. too. It's scary. That it's scary, but so than, beautiful. Than the, so uh, beautiful. Than the father. Yeah. We're dark. I mean, this is like Halloween uh, themed <laughs> almost. Look at this, Nicolas. It's just... Uh, yeah, it's beautiful. It's so good. I mean, Ron Mulek's a genius. Yeah. Yeah. And painting? I don't know. 
Let me think of something contemporary that you could pair it with that. No, with that one. Yeah, because you Cause have... Because then we're going to go like a super dark. Well, but it's a nice collection. It would be a nice uh, curator. Curator, curationship, curation. What can go Curational with that? Mm. Um, let me let me think. Who's um? And Liad was saying, "What about the dog painting, Nicolas?" Oh no, but that's gorgeous. But we were talking about like contemporary, um, mm. artists, because I think that no one could afford the gorgeous painting. Again, I think those paintings, I mean, they must have values, but attached to them, but Yeah, but it's yeah, I don't know. That they're, they're very abstract. I I I don't think these are these are paintings that will ever really associate with like um you know, with with auctions or stuff like hmm. that. That they're you know, beyond that. What painting could go I'm with that sculpture? I'm trying to think too. Um, mm. let me see. Mm. I mean, my Samori would go well, so. Oh, shit. Mm. Oh, you know, it has nothing to do with the sculpture, but, uh, I think it would be amazing if we could own a Matt Bollinger. Yeah, he's kicking ass. Yeah. He's tremendous. Or like an Emil J. Robinson. Yeah, he's doing his like more realism, yeah. like more realistic paintings. Oh, but I always, I mean, if, if you told me you have to get one painting for Nicolas yeah. and you're going to share it with him because you also love it, uh, the one of the bot. Like the... Oh, I love that painting. Oh, it's so yeah. good. So good. I love it. I totally feel I'm not good enough to trade with him for that, but... You know. I, I don't think he has that one. He has it. Still. Still? Well... He owns when it? When I approached him, like, you know, sometime back, he had it. So... <gasps> so let's not say it here, because maybe no, someone... No, no, no. Come on. <laughs> can't afford it. No, please uh, don't. If, if we can't afford it, but, you know, our fellow <laughs> no, millionaire No, please can. don't. Uh, we, they have to invite us to check out the painting. Yes. Right? Or an Emil J. Robinson, like the the drawings he did. Yeah, the pastels. Yeah, yeah so, they're so good. good. So, so good. Mm. But now I'm just like stuck trying to think about something that could pair that Ron Mueck yeah. sculpture. I'm trying to think too. Mm. Although you could buy like a really large Andrew Cranston painting. I think you would love it. Or a very small. Yeah. Like the one of the turtle. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Let me... Let me try and see. Are we here? Let's see. I think see. he posted one, or I saw one posted. He's showing something... Right now, it's a large painting. Mm -hmm. So remarkable how how much he he uh, references uh, Bonard and Villard. Mm -hmm. It's amazing. Oh, but do you know what? What's that? Because I would love, I, and I've already said this. <clears throat> I'm sorry, but contemporary, I would love a Dermot Kelly. Oh yeah, that's very good. So good I don't choice. know if it pairs. Good. But it pairs in my heart. <laughs> I mean, don't so worry. So that's enough. I mean, these are not like sacrifices. It does sacrifices. not pair in my pocket because I don't have the money. No. For it. No, we. I don't think we'll ever. But yeah, that would make me super happy. Yeah, I'm good with it. But the truth is, we have over 150, I would say, pieces that we've gotten from people. Yes. You know, throughout these past couple of years. Yes. And that has, you know, there's nothing that compares to to the pieces that we've been able to um, to get. Yes, this, that's true. And like the happiness of being able to get them. Yeah. And to we recently got. Uh, we never shared it. Our our Caroline G. So. Oh, do you want me to bring it? Yeah, yeah, sure. Oh, for sure. Let's show it to people. Yes. They enjoy, you know, um, when we show pieces we get.
You okay? Are you good? Something? Okay. So we got this one from Caroline, which is really, really beautiful. So good. Palette is gorgeous. Light is gorgeous. Just that greenish, bluish. Yeah. She does these gorgeous um, um, artificial light paintings, like of like dark spaces. I would say, like like that's where she kicks major ass. So. Um, well, she kicks major ass in everything. Everything, but yeah, the, this one's like beautiful, yeah. really beautiful. And could you do me a favor? But uh, underneath the one that we did um, a couple of days ago, underneath that, you can move that one, Ben. No, 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 you could. The, the one of Fed, you could just move it to the side. There we go. And Camilo's drawing, because we haven't shown that one. Yeah, that was uh, far more careful. And we have a, a, a drawing of Camilo Carreño, who's a friend of ours. Uh, yeah, I thought, yeah, we have a couple of drawings of his. But um, showed this one. It's absolutely lovely. Yeah. So we bought also that drawing. Yes, thank you, Daniel Ira. Thank you. Um, so. Let's see, because I want to see if someone answered. Answered if they were millionaires? Well, they would. Well, <laughs> yeah, also. Like, yes, I'm a mil I'm a billionaire well you wouldn't just say it i'm elon Unless musk you're a billionaire yeah uh let's see and if you are what are you doing like you know support us yeah oh painted lives remember oh yeah oh painted lives please. yeah that died quickly no she maybe, never got maybe. back to us no maybe she's uh thinking about it think about it no. yeah if she thinks about it it's uh it's not gonna happen <laughs> um Daniel Arthur was saying, I would buy a Zorn drawing for sure. Oh, yeah, like an etching or like a watercolor. Woof, a watercolor. Liad was saying, Rockwell was great, but I think I prefer Leindecker over Rockwell. Yeah, well, I'm a sucker for Rockwell, but, you know, I would, I don't know. I, I honestly, I don't know if I can decide from either one of them. Mm. Let's see. Víctor Torres dice hola. Hola, Víctor. ¿Qué tal? Um, Steve Weed was saying, I went to his museum and was loaned away. Rockwell's? Yeah, Rockwell Rocks. Yeah. Rockwell was fine arts. And they were saying, I went to his museum and was, and was loaned away. Blown. Blown away. Loan away. Loan away, Danny? <laughs> That's what it says. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, maybe what they wanted to say was on loan, away. So maybe. It was yeah. loan away, so they couldn't see it. Mm. It makes sense. Yeah, maybe <laughs> they wa they were trying to say uh, range. Range? Yeah. Maybe I mean, that's it what means they were trying something to say, somewhere, yeah. yeah. Víctor Torres mm. who's, eh, dice, yo compraría los bocetos de Gaudí del diseño de la Sagrada Familia. Bueno, eso está... Muy bonito también, muy específico. Muy bonito. Sam and Kutcher was saying, one of, my, one of my have to have, if I was a millionaire, I would say I would pay a lot of money for those Fraseta, Lord of the Rings, ink drawings, the Nazgul one in particular. Mm -hmm. Frazetta fan here, yeah. Frazetta it, fan and Lord of the Rings fan, which I have to say, I'll say this like super quickly. Best TV right now, I know that somebody... Who was I? I'm, I'm following somebody who was just like shitting on House of Dragon. Like, settle down. Oh, but there's like, people that. Yeah, but no. Do no, that no, no, with no. everything. I know. I, they and do sometimes it, they, they do, do it, it for, the for exactly. Yeah, they, they just do it to get comments. Yeah, it's like I'm going to uh, go nadando contra corriente. I don't know how to say that. No, just like that. Swimming in the other. Mm -hmm. uh, mm, Rangi. Flow. Of the oh, water. There we go. <laughs> like a salmon. Uh -huh. um, yeah. That's amazing. It's absolutely amazing. Like, Game of Thrones is back. Show is incredible. Pacing is incredible. Last episode, oh my God. 
It's it, all of it is just perfect. It's amazing. And I was I I was I'm still giving it a chance. But the Lord of the Rings one, I mean at the beginning I was um I was like, you know, this this is okay. A lot of people are just like kind of hurt. And, you know, not very objective and they're just not giving it a chance even before it comes out. And I thought that that was unfair. And I thought that that was like a little ridiculous. First couple of episodes, I was like, hey, this is proper good. This is not going to suck. I don't know. I wouldn't say it sucks, but I don't think it's good. I don't think it's good anymore. Like there's there's weird stuff with that writing and I don't know. Uh, And then it doesn't. I mean. It doesn't help that it's up against. I mean, it's not up against, but I mean, you can tell that that just Game of Thrones is that good. It's really that good. Um, I don't know if um, George R. R. Martin is like Tolkien level good, but um, but he's good. Holy crap, he's good. Um, so I would say right now. Um, I'm going to call it Game of Thrones because, yeah, House of the Dragon, but it's Game of Thrones. Um, It's amazing. And I wasn't expecting it. Wasn't expecting it, honestly. Oh, the Star Wars? Andor? Oh, my yeah. God, it's good. I mean, it helps that they have, like, a couple of uh, Game of Thrones uh, actors in there. Acting is fantastic. Pacing, superb. The writing... Amazing. I mean, th- there's nothing about it that's like Star Wars, Star Wars. I mean, there's like some droids, but, you know, but um, there's nothing about it that's, you know, that it's like your typical Star Wars stories. Like there's no lightsabers. There hasn't been a single lightsaber, I feel, um, in it. It's just like a heist story. The fact that you already know eventually what's going to happen just makes it even more dramatic because you, th- I think that, Whenever you know the ending, like the the real ending of a character, and you still feel excited about, like you still you're still feeling, oh my god, are they gonna make it? Yeah, and you're like, like in Better Call Saul. Yeah, and you're like, of course they're happened? gonna make it. You already know the other part of the story. Like, yeah. of course you will, they're gonna make it. And I think it's a it's a true testament of fantastic writing, the fact that they can like bring you into this ride. And you are so into it that your your brain can't like it can't understand that you already know that they're gonna you know that at least one of these characters is gonna come out the other side, um, but you don't care. You're like, yeah, I, I don't care. I just I'm I'm feeling nervous. Something can go wrong. It's like what can go wrong? But um, but fantastic, you know, really good television. Um, and we saw the boys, which we hadn't uh, watched the second, uh, the third um, season, yeah, third season, which is good. I th- I think it was good. Mm-hmm. Um, I think it's gory as hell. Uh, first episode starts with a with, with no, a bang. But the, yeah, but uh, no, I'm not gonna spoil anything. But um, yeah, I I I enjoyed it. I don't know if the story's going anywhere, really, but uh, but I enjoyed it. Maybe they are extending it more than they should a little bit i i would have liked like a like a far more like fleshed out you know succinct story i think would have been better but that's not how these shows work anymore they just you know they have to make money so simon kutcher was saying that show rings of power is not Tolkien. I it's know. actually made up yeah I amazon know. did a terrible job in my opinion yeah i know i i that's why i'm saying like that you 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 realize how far removed uh like these these writers are you know when they have to compete with source material that is just you know that is just good and the fact that that um that you know the the game of thrones show you know is is just a fleshing out of something that i i i've never read the books so i'm just a, like an enormous fan of the series the tv show Um, but from what I, you know, I, I always hear, um, this said uh, on, on reviews, um, that there is info, but the info, I mean, they are kind of like branching away in some, um, 
in some instances from from some of the information that uh, that um, George R. R. Martin uh, wrote, and um, but they're fleshing it out in ways that that he didn't. But he's still working with the show. I feel I think he worked with that show. So I don't know. It's, it's, you know how far he 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 advised on it. Um, but it doesn't matter. It's the same thing with like uh, Elden Ring. Like I think he advised on it enough that it just made the lore so much richer and so much nicer. So I don't know. I don't know. But those uh, those two shows are are terrific. Absolutely terrific. Andor is like what a surprise. Like what a show. Mm. Liad was saying, I haven't seen any of these shows, not a single one. Oh, Liad, they're good. And you don't sleep. So, you know, I know maybe you work at night, but Liad, I, I'm, but these are shows that, y you know, you, you can't work and watch these no. shows. Like, you have to pay attention. Simon Kutcher was saying, yes, The House of the Dragon is definitely oh. the superior show. Oh, a hundred, like a million miles away. You can tell how, I mean, I don't know, like some people say it's like a billion dollar show. Like this, it's as ridiculous as that, like the Amazon um, Lord of the Rings show. Um, but it doesn't matter how much money you like pump into it. Like good story and good writing. Yeah, you can't, you know, you can't pay enough of that. Um, so going back to what people were saying of what they would love to own if they yeah. were millionaires. Yeah. Gil Robles was saying, my dream is to own a Leindecker or yeah. a Cornwall or both. Oh, oh, look at you getting stingy. <laughs> or both. Yeah. yeah. I wouldn't mind both. Not getting stingy, like getting a, a little <laughs> bit. Uh, ¿Cómo se dice? Okay. Ambicioso como. Um, it's okay. No, I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Why am I going for you today with this ambitious? Chistosito? Mm hmm. <laughs> um, Steve Weed mm -hmm. was saying, I'm not a Dali fan, yeah. but when I saw his early work, I was blown away. Uh,. Liad was saying, were they made from real animals? I think so, the carcasses. I don't know if all animals that are already dead, which I would say, I, well, I don't know how you feel about that. If they're just like carcasses, natural carcasses, let's say. Um, I, uh, I have to, oh, I, oh, I'll owe you that little bit of information very important but a little bit but if not Liad, if we have to negotiate that little bit uh which i'm fine compromising um then nicola hicks or um i don't know why i want like an animal nicola hicks or um beth kavaner stickner yeah mm. Simon Kutcher was saying, wait, it has to be a painting? Okay, I say I have to have the John of Mars painting by Frazetta. If I was a millionaire. No, no, no. You're good. Like, if you mm. wanted your pen and ink, you get your pen and ink. Steve Weed was saying, Nicolas, what do you think about the great Western artists like Russell and Remington? Oh, geniuses also. Yeah. Adore Remington. The night paintings. His sculptures. Oh. So good. Liad was saying, someone buy for Nicolas. Let's start a GoFundMe. Um, yeah, that's a for large which one? For, yeah. GoFundMe. Yeah. Um, Vladimir Stravesky mm -hmm. was saying, Sharko Bashevsky is similar to Ron Mueck. Mm. I don't know them. No, me neither. Let's Google. Look. Oh, yeah. I think I've seen their work. Yeah. Oh, that's very beautiful. Yeah, this one's beautiful. Yeah, I like that it. that one's tremendous. Oh, and this one breaking the... Yeah, that one's very nice. Yeah. I like it. Yeah, very nice. 
There's always a Russian equivalent. Isn't that funny? Always. Oh, look. Or Eastern European. Or... Uh, yeah. Mm. It's a little more synthetic, isn't it? Yeah, like yeah, artificial. yeah. Like a little bit... There's an artificial. Well, at least this one. Yeah. Yeah, but I like that too. Hmm. It's just a little different. It, it rings a little different. Yes, yes, yes. But no, you, you are right, Vladimir. We had... Uh, no knowledge of that artist, so thank you. Um, Steve Witt was saying, Danny, do you and Nick <laughs> like the same type of art? I think it's interesting because there's things that Nicolas likes that are not my favorite and there's things that I like that are not Nicolas' favorite, but I would say that we have uh, a lot of things we like in common. Yeah. So, because I was going to say that I really enjoy that. It doesn't mean that we have to like the same things, but I really like that. Like, I could be super moved by an artist that I discover. Well, not discover. Like, I I get to know their work, and I show it with Nicola, to Nicolás, and I know that he's going to enjoy it as much as I did, or the other way around. And we usually do that. So... That is something that I'm super happy that we have in common. Yeah, it doesn't have to be. It's not like a, I would say that it's not with everything. No, no, no. That's why I think why in broad I get... terms, like we have we similar are, we have sensibilities very, very similar. to to the things we for the things we like. I don't know how to say that, but yeah. Yeah, chances are that if like if if each of us buys like a piece separately, let's say, we're you know, the chances are extremely high that we're both going to like it, mm -hmm. even though the other person was the one that bought it, let's say. Gabriel Pozo dice, gracias a todos, de verdad disfruta el día pintando con ustedes. Abrazos. Chao, Chao Gabriel. Gabriel. Saludos a Julián. Y a Gonzalo, diría Nicolás. Estoy segura que Gabriel <laughs> conoce un Gonzalo. Sí, pero... Eh, Pankernik dice, rangue. El otro día escuché en la radio que decían cringe, como cringe. No sabía lo que decían así. As, no sabía que lo decían así por acá. Es casi como rangue. Claro, y... ellos entienden. El rangue y el cringe. No, no empieces. Eso parece una canción de velos. No, eso me acuerda. Mi hermana me contó una vez, o sea, me acuerdo de esta historia, que estaban leyendo algo en el colegio y a una compañera de ella le tocó leer... Sí. Y empezó a leer y dijo, Madre Moise, ye. Ay, pero... Y el bueno. nombre... De... Pues sí, pero, o sea, le pasó, porque sí. como está leyendo en español y meten una palabra en otro lenguaje, pues... Sí, pero yo digo que esas son difíciles, porque es que, es que no... O sea, nosotros hemos vuelto muy como... O sea... A ver, te lo pongo así. No, 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 es que estoy buscando un ejemplo. O sea, casi todo el mundo mira, lee Shakespeare y dice Shakespeare, ¿no es cierto? O sea, y si tú lo leyeras, dice Shakespeare, pero uh -huh. no sé, de pronto se volvió como tan presente que tú lo lees y dices, ah, Shakespeare, y dices Shakespeare, o dices Shakespeare, o, o sea, lo, lo dices de la manera más colombiana que se puede, le dices Shakespeare, o sea, Shakespeare, así. Uh -huh. Pero si tú lees Ingres, no dices Ang. Uh -huh. No, yo entiendo, pues 100%, y por eso estoy y diciendo de la Croix. que, o sea, fuera del chiste, como estaba leyendo yo en español, sí. y vi range, sí. o sea, no es como que... No, o sea, no es inadmisible, Ay. pero... O, y, o sea, y lo mismo le pasó a la compañera de mi hermano. Sí, pobre. Solo que, pues es chistoso cuando uno le pasa porque uno se da cuenta, pero es como que también uno asume que el cerebro esté como haciendo esos saltos como súper conscientes, sí. cuando no, o sea, no, no, no. O sea, no, no, no. O sea, no, Gabriel. Yo sé que fue Pankernick el que dijo, pero no, Gabriel. Uh, let's see. Fue Gonzalo. Sí, fue Gonzalo. Eh, a ver... Steve Weed was saying, what blows my mind, Nicolás, is that you can talk and paint at the same time. Oh, this is pre-recorded. So I'm, I'm actually on the side, like just standing on the side, like not doing anything. Mm -hmm. 
Don't say that because then people would. Yeah, I know that some it. people are going to believe it. It's yeah. Photoshop again. Um, Carla Anglada was saying, I'm not sure why I'm drawn to Giacometti, but oh, I would yeah. appreciate a painting slash drawing oh, of, right. and of his and sculpture remembrance carcass, Wyatt, Wyatt's orca. Darn, there are so many. Oh, but Giacometti. Oh, yeah. I mean. I mean, I'm missing. Yeah, it's it's impossible. It's impossible to do this exercise, yeah, I would honestly. Love oh, to you, have a Giacometti. Oh, are you kidding me? Like anything from Giacometti. Yeah. I think that was my answer the last time we, we I said think so. This. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. Think yeah. So. I said Giacometti. Mm. Salmon Cutcher was saying, Elden Ring is so good. You can almost feel like those people that worked on it love Tolkien. The short stories about the characters are actually great. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Liad was saying, I think having dead animals in your house is kind of weird. Um, I don't know. My mother has... You know, my father's ashes and her sister's ashes and her brother's ashes. I don't know. You would say, I think having bones, like charred bones, is kind of weird. Or, you, you know, there's people that in their backyard, if they have like a big enough house, they'll, they'll, you know, they can bury their relatives or something, you know, or they did back, you know, some years ago. And, um... That would kind of feel creepy too. Like, oh, the backyard with like dead people in it. Like, that's kind of weird. Um, I don't know. Doug Farron was saying, I feel that the rings is for a different age group. So the comparison is difficult. Maybe. Maybe. That's may true. Maybe. Yeah, yeah, maybe. Maybe. Oh, because we were talking about She-Hulk. And we haven't seen the finale. No, the, yeah. But it's. It's not a good we, show. We're not liking it. No. I don't know. Because I've seen that people like it. Uh, and I've seen people doing like fan art. And that's perfect if they liked it. But I didn't find the appeal of it. It just it didn't make the cut. There's there's people that like anything Marvel. Yeah, but not for me. But I'm not usually, my cup of tea. I'm usually one of those people. Because I've always said like... I grew up when comic books were not cool. So when comic book stories were like super lame, when, when saying that you like comic books was like, hi, I don't have any friends. Um, so I tried to like celebrate the fact that there is so much, you know, awesome, like so many awesome stories and so many awesome characters just um, out there for everyone to enjoy. Um, but I, you know, and I give, like, I've watched every single one of those Marvel, like, series. I've, I, I've watched it, give it a chance. I mean, we've even watched old uh, She-Hulk, even if we don't like it. Oh, we've watched all of it, yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's why I'm saying. Yeah, we've watched all of it. Uh, and there's been, like, series, there's been some of these that are not great, I feel, some of these shows. <laughs> I'm sure there's going to be more that are not great. They just, they kind of feel like for for you to have like a good one, like a, a, a Loki, let's say. Or a WandaVision. Or WandaVision, yeah. There has to be like a couple, like, no, more than a couple of like really, really bad ones. Uh, but yeah, I just don't, I just can't. I, I don't, I don't know. I don't even, I'm even like saddened that, this is maybe a character that, you know, is going to be part of like the bigger universe, uh, you know, in the future. It's it leaves me like no want to know more about this character. Like, I just I don't want her to be in a in a cool movie in the future. I just don't. I always I'm feeling like afraid that it's like, oh, I just don't want you to be here. Like, I don't know, because I because like, we, we even like Miss Marvel. A lot yeah, more. Yeah, I, was, I think it was fun. I think it's better. I think it's so much better. Like, yeah. I it just could think... be cringy, but it was fun. It was like, you could understand that it was 
like talk about audiences like i think that that's a show for like younger audiences and i think it's great but it can still be good even if it's for younger audience yeah i think was, i think I that think she fun. hulk is not i think it was just good. fun but uh she hulk i just i haven't been able to understand like what they want from this character like i know that they were going for like sitcommy like you know kind of funny and that's sort of what they were hoping for with the with cases with the with each case that they bring up like each week but they're not really fleshed out or they're not quite funny enough i feel well the the you know the frog dude was um kind of funny but i don't know maybe last episode was less but not really or maybe it was less because it had that daredevil maybe um i don't know i just don't think that's a I don't think there's a character there still. I really don't. I really, really don't. And it's sad because I, I think sad, that they yeah. could could have made a very strong and cool uh, character. Yeah, yeah. I mean, if it's if she's going to in these new Avengers replace like the strong, like let's say the strong character that Hulk is, um, you would hope that there's something there to it but um but i get but i guess you know hulk didn't have the best of uh, beginnings so maybe maybe we can you know we can give her a chance and say like maybe maybe because mm. those first hulk movies i mean they're very much hulk they almost feel like um you know comic well one is like super comic booky but um but they always reminded me of the Hulk of the uh, animated show, like from years and years and years ago. Uh, but um, but those weren't good movies. Like I love the Hulk, but th those were just like it was just fun to see the Hulk finally, you know, as the, as a character. But they weren't great. Um, <laughs> and it took us a while. It took it. It took Avengers and Avengers Two, and then Ragnarok, which is amazing. Um, to get like Hulk, to get like a sense of who Hulk was. So I don't know, but her, I j yeah, I just don't like her. I just don't. I don't know. Pankernik was saying Loki was the best. Yeah. Y Pankernik dice ya terminé mi mati, mi mate Ma y mi pintura. Gracias siempre por esos streams. Son muy lindos e inspiradores. Saludos. Nosotros... Chao, Pankernik. Muchas gracias. Well, and I think we should uh, break uh, Danny Lira. Break as in yeah, well, I think we're good. Yeah, yeah, because you said break as if yeah, break we were gonna break, break and well, not my face. No, yes. break and come back again because break is like stop and then you come back. So no, well, we'll come back tomorrow. Well, uh, but no, yeah, so we're gonna stop. <laughs> okay, Oof. Jesus. So, uh, what were you saying? Uh, that I think we should break. Mm -hmm. Um, no, because I'm noticing that you know. I can do a ton of these today, like a ton of these little um, kind of uh, stripes. And they're really important because I have to follow form, you know, with them. Mm -hmm. um, I was very worried that um, I couldn't solve this simply, mm -hmm. but I think it's solved well. It's solved well enough that um, where the um, the form is, is described, um, and yet there's, you know, there's paint to it, which is what I always, always hope. Not that it feels like, like super, super tight. I, I just don't like that, that feeling where painting just leaves, you know, the, the, like the equation where you're trying to paint, but because you're so caught up in, in not losing your drawing, you, you have this like fear of not losing your drawing that you end up being super hesitant about uh, putting paint down. And um, I don't like that. I've never liked that about, um, about tight paintings where if you, if you don't, um, if you're not careful enough, you fall into this trap where you forget to be bold. You forget to be painter mm -hmm. and you start being like a colorist, like just filling with color. Um, and I think like, you know, that's a nice construction of an ear. It's super helpful to make that head turn. The fact that it's like a little bit in light and then it turns into like this nice, um, almost like silhouette, but it's a, I think it's a fleshed out silhouette. Like, you know, it is clearly darker than, than the lighter background, 
that's I guess the point. But it's also um, there's also enough uh, modeling in there to give it like a sense of of um, fullness. Mm -hmm. And I think the same thing is happening with the tiger. Like I'm slowly getting into this groove of of what those stripes mean. Um, yes, in terms of them being graphic, but also more importantly, I would say they have to feel kind of soft. It's very easy to then to them to make them stripy, to make them very very heavy handed. I feel mm -hmm. that's a that's a really um, obvious risk that you can uh, you can take. Um, but more importantly, it's just you know going with with the form, like traveling through the form. I think that that's that's very 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 important, and that the shape is also you know, very sensitive. Yeah, I love that part of the scapula. Oh, yeah, this that's the best part. Yeah, that's the best part Yeah, of that pose. Beautiful. Um, I was worried about the transitioning of color here, but it all feels quite organic. Yes. I mean, um, it does feel like his head is popping out in some strange, weird way, but, I mean, strange, weird way would define um, Kim Jong-gi quite well, I feel. So... Yeah, so I'm very happy, very, very content with um, what I was feeling at the beginning, which was like, I'm going to ruin this. Like, my drawing is all is going to be completely obliterated. Like, I'm, I'm just going to paint, start painting over it and just kill it. Um, and no, I don't think it happened. So I'm, I'm very happy that that, that's, um, that that worked out. We still have some ways to go uh, because all these stripes have to be done and eventually move up to this, you know, up this tail that kind of wraps, you know, from here around and is, you know, um, sort of strangling this, this um, arm here. We have to paint that hand, which is going to be cool, I feel. Last thing I'm going to paint is this little guy. Mm -hmm. um, I think he's going to be like the, the um, in many ways, if this works, like he's going to be the easiest one to paint because I just need to choose my values like, super super well and mm -hmm. then it's just you know it's just following that little shape that i have there i can even um condense the information a lot and not worry about detail mm -hmm. so this one if if this little guy you know remains way back then that's that's good um and i think that's um uh, yeah that's it so i think we're gonna keep working tomorrow maybe tomorrow we do um an early early session mm -hmm. so that um I can paint the portraits uh, in the afternoon. Yeah, because we uh, we're still going, so um, there's still yeah, a lot to do. We have a Friday live stream. Yeah. Tomorrow. Yeah. So let's do a, mor a morning one. Yes. And we'll keep doing this. Hopefully, we advance like a little bit more, and uh, and then uh, we'll you know we'll probably have to finish it next week. But I think that's fine. Yes. So and in the meantime, I'm I'm still doing like a bunch of portraits. So yeah. So Danny Lira. So uh, take us take us home in a very we are home. You know, um, just just uh, again we are home. Summarize when we are it. with our OPO family. Yes. So we're home. Okay. Yes. Uh, Lay it thick. No, it's true. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, so no, Drink I think uh, as we always say, thank you everyone so so much for joining us mm -hmm. it makes us super happy to have your companion yes ship companionship yeah or company your company actually companionship i don't you know i think that's a word yeah okay or as i would say your companion yeah so thank you everyone for being here uh remember if you want to join us uh it would be very cool if you could uh, hit the subscribe button yeah, so that we can know that it's easier for you guys to know that we're live and you can join us in every live stream yeah. or in the live streams you can. Uh, we are here every single week, almost every day of the week. Yeah. So be sure to uh, hit that subscribe button and ring the bell. Yeah. That would be very cool. Uh, we do have a web page. It's yes. called ourpaintedlives.com. It's over there. Um, we have Instagrams. There's my Instagram and Nicolas' Instagram if you want to check those out. 
And thank you again for joining us. Yes. We'll see you tomorrow in the morning. Yes. So thank you.